What's up, dudes? It's the vanilla Q&A. Yes, that's right. We're not going to do any drug questions because last week I realized that all the questions were repetitive questions. Same old shit. So this week we're going to do um, a little bit different. No drug questions allowed. Even if you super chat me, I'll take your money, but I will not answer your question because I need a little bit of a break of the repetitive PD talk. Okay. Uh, this week, talking about PEDs. <laughs> this... <laughs> Talking about, of course, I did PED content. Uh, this week, I recorded uh, the best dose of Mastrone. That's, I think it's about 38 minutes. It'll be up on Monday, unless I decide to change my mind and do some sort of April Fool's upload. But uh, probably not Monday. I'm going to be too busy. Um, I recorded the best dose of Superdrol and Methasterone, or Methasterone and Dimethazine, because Dimethazine is a dimer of uh, Superdrol, and it's basically a pro drug. So I combined all of the scientific evidence because it was paper, paper thin, or at least what I was able to find, into a single video. And I did uh, the best dose of uh, Times and Beta 4, uh, or no, TB500. It's also very paper thin, only five studies on TB500. All of the beneficial effects or the supposed beneficial effects of TB500 are actually stemming from Times and Beta 4, but it's a partial sequence, right? TB500 is a partial sequence. And we do know that uh, HGH frag or ALD9604 don't potentiate the exact same effects as growth hormone does. So I'm going to separate that TB4, uh, TB500 from times and beta 4. And then the times and beta 4 will take a while because that's 1400 studies or so. Uh, what else did I do? I think I recorded another video. Oh, yeah, best dose of Terinibal. <laughs> I also did that one. So I've been uh, fucking busy, guys. Let me double check if I did all of that. Uh, I posted it on my Instagram, but I already forgot. Let's see. Yeah. Mastrone, Turinibol, Superdrol, and Dimethazine and TB500. And now I'm working on the Tremoloni sandwich video. So stay tuned. That one is going to be epic. I'm already 500 studies in. Yes, I research very, very fast. Um, so that will drop at one point or another. Okay. So we're only going to do vanilla questions. Uh, be forewarned, right? It's right there. Uh, drug super chats will be ignored. So if you send me money anyway, I'll take your money. This time we're going to talk about everything besides performance enhancing drugs. So let's get started with the questions already posted by members, and then we'll go through the the, the ones that were posted on the the what is it the community section. Two a day workouts, yes or no? Uh, yes, if you have enough recovery aids in the picture. Um, with recovery aids, I mean performance enhancing drugs. Well, 45 minutes of zone two cardio a few hours prior to weight training blunt anabolism. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Again, if you're doing, uh, you know, more than enough uh, food in your diet and enough PEDs. I mean, when I was running two and a half grams of gear, I was uh, doing two workouts a day plus cardio plus posing practice. And as long as you're doing, you know, uh, one or two meals after your zone two cardio, then I don't have a problem with it. So you do your zone two cardio, you have two meals, you do a workout. You have two meals or three meals, you have uh, another workout, maybe a nap in between those workouts, and then you have another one or two meals, you know? And it should be able to recover from that quite well. Assuming you keep the volume and the intensity of every workout low enough for you to recover from all of that um, time you spent in the gym. Uh, hey, Steve, I want to use methylene blue pre-workout, but I'm concerned about the interactions. Okay, so he didn't get the idea of the, of the vanilla q &A. Skip, you can ask me that next week. All right. Uh, Maximal187 asks, Hey, Steve, do you pay attention to your resting or the heart rate variability too with devices like a Garmin watch? I'm not sure what that is, but if you say so. When I was on TRT Plus dose, my heart rate variability was fine, but since I'm on a cycle 350 test, 3 milligrams of Primo, uh 20 milligrams out of our per day my heart rate variability really tanked with an average of 35 milliseconds hope this question is okay since it's more about heart rate heart rate variability instead of peds yes it's all good a uh, daily fast cardio that's how you get around it so if you want heart rate variability of course you're already going to the gym you're doing basically high intensity interval training right you have a set and then you take a break and then you have a set you take a break and you do that maybe you know 12 times uh, plus the the, the warm-ups which you don't really increase your heart rate obviously so in order for your heart rate variability to really improve you need to make sure that you don't rest too much in between sets right long enough for you to have a good set 
so you don't lose any strength or um, you know performance during that uh, consecutive set that you might do. And you also need to keep your heart rate stable in the morning with just fasted cardio. And feel free to throw in a couple uh, intervals at the end. So maybe you do 20 minutes steady states with a, a heart rate of, what was it, 130, 135 beats per minute. That's pretty much zone two for most people. And then you throw in two or three, uh, you know, uh, all out rounds of 30 seconds in there, right? So your heart rate probably goes up to 180 or maybe 220, you know, depending on how much beta blockers you're on <laughs> with this stack. And then, uh, you know, your heart rate should improve. But it's very important for everybody to keep doing their cardio while they use performance enhancing drugs because that just keeps your heart healthy. I mean, I do it year round. It sucks. Yes, it might come at the expense of your leg size and your overall leg intensity, but I do feel that keeping the cardio in and, and doing some strenuous intervals here and there um, actually helps with lifting um, quite a bit. And, and it's also good for heart health. Uh, Vexen387 asks, is PD the reason you knew about crypto? <laughs> if not, what was it? And what made you want to learn about crypto and start investing? Uh, I think it was. Yeah, I think I think some of the sort like first it was Western Union. And then uh, at one point, people started to ask about Bitcoin. I think I sent my first Bitcoin to I think the Nitro. <laughs> the DNP source <laughs> from the US that mixed his uh, DNP with um, what was it? Uh, antioxidants, vitamin C, and a couple other things, you know, just to keep his audience healthy. I think he was the one that I sent Bitcoin to, and he retired after the first or second Bitcoin bull run um, because he, he accumulated so much, so much Bitcoin, and it was the time that it went like, you know, uh, the 200 or 2,000 X or something. So he cashed out around the time. I think that was the time, yeah, but I learned about crypto because I wanted to buy gear, and then I... Uh, you know, as time goes on and I saw the potential on the charts and, and I realized that I had disposable income that I wasn't using. And, you know, when you understand how uh, inflation works and you see that stock market is not so much returns, then I realized, you know what, I'm going to put it in here. So all the money that I made uh, additionally from coaching and selling, yeah, bikinis. I used to make bikinis when my wife was competing. All that extra, what was it, $25,000 or something that I made, I put it all into crypto, and that's how I became financially secure. <laughs> so everybody always laughs, see if you made bikinis. So well, after I pulled that money that I made from bikinis out of crypto, uh, I didn't have to worry about money again. So uh, good times. Uh, Octavian88 asks, uh, what are the 10 vigorous rules to live by that the coach learned from his life experience? Um uh, become financially secure so you don't have to worry about shit. That's rule number one. Really, money uh, money makes a lot of things tolerable on this planet. Like this this planet will still be shithole, right? It's still hell. But if you've got a little bit more money, you can bring yourself out of the shithole into a little bit more higher quality of life. Right? It, I think this, this planet is a giant video game and a test of your patience. And then when you're rewarded, hopefully there's an afterlife. Um, or some sort of alien that will pick you up and grant you immortal life, albeit on another planet. Uh, right? Fingers crossed. <laughs> it's just a phase, a phase that we all have to go through, uh, full with uh, trials and tribulations. So that's rule number one, get financially secure. And then you have rule number two, uh, don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> so you say financially secure, but you never mention to people how financially secure you are, because otherwise you get a boatload of cockroach friends that um will take uh will take your financially se financial security away so that's rule number two rule number three is um try to surround yourself with good people give everybody a chance but if they fuck up and it's unacceptable you let them go right the planet is big there's seven billion people out there so you don't have to torture yourself with people who are not good for you um you just let them go right set them, set them free Set them free. Could be relationships, could be um, a family, could be friends, right? uh, people used to know, business partners. If it's not going in the right direction, there's 7 billion opportunities or alternatives out there. Let them go and find somebody else. Uh, rule number four. Actually, it should be rule number one, right? Treat your body like a fucking palace, right? So that means you eat right, you do the fucking cardio, you do the fucking blood work, so you're preventative and preemptive in case something goes wrong. 
Um, and you do this your entire life, right? That's why I never get why people eat out so much. Eat out once a week. Oh, today, this week it will be twice because I just had Cheesecake Factory, so I shouldn't really say say too much. Um, I will eat out. Uh, well, I ate out today, all right, and then I'll eat out tomorrow. But today was with the bros and the buddies, and then tomorrow we'll just will uh, will be with the wife solo after watching uh, Godzilla versus Kong. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so treat your body like a palace. That also means that you shouldn't stick your dick in uh, subpar women. Right? I, I wish I knew this when I was younger um, because I didn't have so much game. So you stick yourself into sixes or sevens. When in reality, you know, if you treat your body right and you got a great physique and you got abs and a little bit of a personality, uh, you're deserving of eights, nines, and tens. Right? So you, instead of going for quantity, you go for quality. Um, and the other five is basically uh, you know, the same. And otherwise, we're going to be here for an hour. So that that's basically it, right? A financial security, treat your body right. Um, surround yourself with winners, not losers. And uh, uh, what was it? Man, I already forgot. Well, you can, you guys can scroll back. <laughs> oh yeah, and only stick your dick into the women who are worthy. Yeah, treat your treat your knob like a, I don't know what what is it called? Like a cane that a king would use. All right, only only knight those who are worthy. Okay, before we get too much off track. IDD uh, 0212, is that, a, is that a Doom cheat code? Uh, ask, hey Steve, what is a good blood glucose and blood pressure heart rate levels throughout the day and during training? Well, during training, of course, your blood glucose is going to drop a little bit. So at least it shouldn't drop below 70 milligrams per deciliter. Um, and it, that's also good to have upon waking. My blood glucose is always 70, maximum 80 milligrams per deciliter, even during the off season. Uh, blood pressure, 125 over 65, I would say is good. And a heart rate, um, a resting heart rate of 45 to 55, I would say is good. That, that, was, <laughs> that was my blood glucose, my heart rate, and my blood pressure when I was 260 pounds. Um, you know, because I kept doing the daily fasted cardio and I ate right. And, and I didn't use stimulants or high dose drugs. Of course, when you start taking stimulants and high dose drugs, yes, your blood pressure goes up and your heart rate goes up. So you only limit yourself to certain periods of time when it's actually warranted when you're trying to get extra diced. So right, the majority of the time, it should, should just be normal, even if you're freaky large. Uh, let's see, he also asks, uh, how, how do we know if you have enough antioxidants? Is it easy to overdose on antioxidants? I mean, there's always too much of a certain thing, right? There is some scientific evidence that uh, antioxidants blunt the post-exercise stress response and might, uh, you know, lower um, hypertrophy signaling. And um, let's see. Oh, one second, guys. Chat was resetting. Um, but it's, it's, I don't think that there's really blood work analysis you can do for it. I, I know that gamma GT is very dependent on your antioxidant status. So if you take a glutathione, for example, caffeine, carnitine, which all have a little bit of antioxidant benefits, um, then, then of course your gamma GT is in range. But like checking your, uh, the enzymes, the GSH, glutathione, what is there's a couple markers that you sometimes see in the, in the scientific evidence and i tried to look for them all over thailand and even with with blood work at, at lab corp and i could never find them so i'm not even sure if you can check your serum for antioxidant status so you know there's a boatload of antioxidants in there out there i mean estradiol is an antioxidant in the endothelium vitamin c is an antioxidant many of the foods that we eat have antioxidants in it. Of course, glutathione is one of the best antioxidants uh, superseded by melatonin. Um, so, you know, if you take a little bit of each for its unique benefits, so maybe 600 milligrams injectable glutathione two or three times per week and three to 10 milligrams of melatonin before bed, uh, and feel free to ramp it up to 100 milligrams if you can tolerate that much, and keeping your estrogen in range, right? All these little things contribute, a little bit of vitamin E, a little bit of, I mean, even boron has antioxidant properties. So eat right, and then usually it sorts itself out. Oh, yeah, and don't smoke, don't drink, don't be in a toxic relationship, right? Because now you're stressed, and it's also not so good for your antioxidant status. So all these little things contribute. Oh, don't, don't watch the news. Yeah. If you want to be oxidized, yeah, that's the way to do it. 
Uh, do you know any sort of program that calculates micronutrients in the diet or do you have to do it manually? Chronometer. Um, I always did it manually. You can go to the USDA website. It used to be on self um dot nutrition.com but i can't find that anymore so here you have food data from the usda and there you can find it yourself so let me link that down below uh, and that thumbnail vanilla ice cream so I linked it down below. There you can find all of the food data that Chronometer and all these apps use. And you just type it into an Excel sheet. That's what I did over a decade ago. And then uh, you just calculate it that way. Um, the problem is iodine content, for example, creatine content, um, boron content, I think chromium content, that's all not listed on the USDA uh, database. So you have to do that manually, which is what I did. Um, yeah so it sucks but if you really want to know then you're going to have to spend a couple of days on adderall uh going through the database <laughs> copying all those things uh just curious any good crypto youtubers you follow all right let's see who do i follow oh i follow the youtubers uh they're all at the bottom Cryptos are us for the daily news. He's got two shows. Cryptos are us. Jason Pizzino, very good for technical analysis and just market overview. Satoshi Stacker uh, has got some interesting insights, even though uh, many times he's kind of wrong about what's going to happen. Jason is a lot smarter. His brother also has a YouTube channel. Um, I'm not subscribed, though, surprisingly. Chart Champions, uh, always very arrogant when the market goes up, but they do have their... Um, unique insights uh let's see benjamin cohen probably the best for overall market analysis um you know he's a little bit he's a little bit hesitant i, I think he made a couple of investing mistakes this cycle he thought it was going to go lower and i think he, he's uh, biting himself in the ass right now but um you know that's why we have trades and uh alessio rostani even though he doesn't upload so often I think that's pretty much it yeah i think that's pretty much it. yeah that's it yeah so those those are the ones i follow you know guys you, you guys better be careful because there will be a lot of altcoin shills this uh, next year um don't believe the hype the, the crypto xyz is not going to go to the moon unless it's already in the top 20. so you might be able to make a little bit of money on some weird altcoin. Just don't put in more money than you're willing to lose, right? Just because I can make big trades um, doesn't mean that everybody can. You know, did I make money on Luna when it crashed? Yes, I did. I made a good amount. <laughs> but I've been in this crypto game and doing trades since, uh, well, almost a decade now. So, yeah, 2015. So be careful man buy a couple books about trading know to see the tops and the volume and and you know see where the, the the trades are being set up you have plugins for that which you can add to um what is it trading view and and and, and learn or sign up to one of these guys for their programs because they usually instruct that uh, themselves i did that also so you know if you want to put a thousand dollars in x uh altcoin xyz fine but i got the large majority of my portfolio in the top 10. No, not XRP though. <laughs> Fuck that. Oh, I'm going to be so behind on the questions. Okay. Uh, yo, Steve, uh, what can cause hyper, uh, hypoglycemia in between meals? I'm 300 pounds, 6'6, six, six, eat about 6,500 calories a day. Breakfast, oatmeal, away during the day. I eat a boatload of rice with steak. Uh, I ate my breakfast early. Don't eat something in between. I don't take it with lunch uh, without going hypo. I'm not an insulin. I take 250 milligrams of test per week. Do I use growth hormone per day? Okay, so you have an insulin over secretion. Could be from the oatmeal that you're taking in the morning. Maybe switch the oatmeal on the way out and just have rice. And just have rice. And then that means if you're going hypo in between meals, there might be too much time in between the meals. So if you eat your breakfast early and don't eat something in between, uh, make it to lunch, then it would be best to have some sort of liquid meal, like a proper meal. I think oatmeal and whey is, is, is a shit meal, honestly. 
All right, so have some rice, have some fish or steak. Steak will kind of blunt the digestion of the rice. And then add some more vegetables to blunt the digestion further. You know, 50 grams, 100 grams of vegetables. If you're eating that much, you know, of course it sucks, but the vegetables will help with glucose homeostasis of these meals. So put them closer together and alter your meal composition, and I think you should be okay. Hey, Steve, I know you're trying to going for a baby, and I wish you the best of luck. I'm in the opposite position. Just found out my girlfriend is pregnant, even though I've been on for over a year, currently on cycle, and only recently stopped taking train. How unlikely is this? Well, it's not as unlikely as you think. I'm 25, by the way. Yeah, so when you're 25 and you're on cycle, uh, it doesn't mean that your uh, semen parameters uh, go down to zero, right? Even in the scientific evidence, which I revealed in the steroids versus fertility video, I'll link it down below, even though for you, it's too late. <laughs> Congratulations, by the way, I'm jealous. I wish my wife was pregnant. Let's see. Uh, I'll link it down below. So a lot of steroids, they don't really fully shut you down. I mean, I had good fertility on testosterone only cycles, albeit that my total semen count per milliliter was like 20, 22 million, you know, morphology and motility shit. But if you're banging hot 20 to 25 year olds, guess what? Those women are fertile as fuck. <laughs> When they're 40, it's difficult. My semen parameters are absolutely fucking stellar, but because my wife is older, it's more difficult to get pregnant, right? So we're probably, uh, we'll do one more round of IUI, intrauterine insemination in uh, well, two weeks. Uh, then I'm going back on cycle because I froze so much semen uh, that I could basically repopulate the entire planet if there's a nuclear holocaust or a zombie apocalypse. And uh, it, it, so, and for... <laughs> For IVF, if we need to go IVF, uh, if the next round of intrauterine insemination is not successful, then we go IVF, uh, probably ICSI, where you, they cut off the tail and they insert it directly into the into the egg. And for that, uh, there's a, a significantly higher percentage of uh, pregnancy outcomes if they use frozen semen to fertilize the embryos, right? So um, my job is almost over. I did my part. My fertility parameters came back, you know, fucking stellar. But if, you know, what, nine months or 10 months of natural conception and two rounds of IUI with multiple embryo or multiple eggs is not sufficient to get my wife pregnant, then it's uh, IVF with the ICSI or the MC, whatever is the best opportunity so we can... Um, have the most embryos and then we'll do three rounds of that and if we're not successful after three rounds of ivf um then i guess i'm going to buy another cat <laughs> you know so i think uberman did four rounds with that girl i mean fuck, that hit piece was terrible that they wrote on him so anyway congratulations uh if you're on cycle it doesn't mean that you're infertile and if you're banging uh women that are, are making love to making love to women that are in their most fertile period of their lives then yes you can get them pregnant like that, even if you have 2 million a semen per one milliliter um, with terrible morphology and terrible motility, because all you need is one. And young women are very receptive to semen and getting themselves pregnant. Yeah. Good luck, buddy. Make sure that you follow the five rules, which I just mentioned about financial security. Andrew Gillardi is, hey, Steve, I do powerlifting. What do you think is the best body fat for maximum strength? Um, could be anywhere, man. Could be 10% to 25%. You know, as long as the body fat is not so high that it messes with your leverages. But I've seen powerlifters that are like, you know, morbidly obese almost. Um, and, and, and they still have great uh, leverages. So Dan Green is shredded. Hofstra Bjornsson is shredded. Uh, Jake... What's his name? Another guy. And, and that guy that, that sumo squats 1,000 pounds like it's nothing. Th th those guys are all uh, shredded, you know? So it, it's, it's uh, I don't know, do, do what you feel comfortable with. Let's see. Hey, Steve, any tips for habits of maintaining prostate health? Late 40s now, PSA is always good, but occasionally knows poor flow and more frequently up the night to urinate. Thanks in advance um lower your inflama uh, inflammation and if your psa is is good but you notice poor flow uh, it could be that your blood pressure is not good or um i know i haven't really looked into prostate health that much 
you know, maybe maybe do an ultrasound, see what's going on. And if if you have to go up to urinate, what what does that have to do with the prostate? <laughs> I mean, your bladder is full, right? If your prostate is really big to the size of a golf ball, okay, then you or a hand, Jesus, um, then you obviously have to go to urinate. But you would feel that sitting down, dude. So go in for an ultrasound. You don't have to use the finger of the nurse or the the, the examining physician. Uh, you can do an ultrasound through the bladder. All you need is a full uh, bladder, and then they check it, and you're done in like 10 minutes. So you have to, you know, pee very badly, but it's not too long. So do an ultrasound, see what's going on. Um, a poor blood flow could be from inflammation in the prostate, albeit that PSA would be elevated. And if you want to maintain prostate health, um, well, controlling your estrogen and DHT levels, don't letting them go up rampant, because it's a combination of estradiol and prostate that contributes to benign prostate hyperplasia, and potentially prostate cancer, right? So get diagnosed and then take it from there. Uh, Biskumpf asked, hey, Steve, I can't get by with a slice of pizza. I need to gorge myself to feel satisfied with a cheat meal, three meals from a local Chinese, plus rice, plus chips, plus Coke, plus Coke. What kind of Coke? Plus sweets, plus ice cream. <laughs> For that reason, I only cheat once every four to six weeks, right after I do bloods. So the reason why you gorge yourself is because you don't cheat enough. You need to cheat so often that you become bored with it. All right? Besides one extra cardio night before, one berberine, apple cider vinegar, lowering the next day calories, how do I go about managing the damage from big cheats? Um, so three meals to the local Chinese and rice and chips and Coke. So how about instead of the chips and cocaine, well, of course, it's a Diet Coke, guys. Sweets and ice cream. Um, dude, I had, today I had something similar. I have that every week. What the fuck are you talking about? You know? I mean, if you want to gorge yourself to feel satisfied, make sure you train hard during the, day, uh, during the week and do some fucking cardio so you have uh, all the glycogen depletion to catch that. And otherwise, maybe you're just not eating enough during the week. Maybe you're micronutrient deficient. Maybe you're dehydrated, right? The body doesn't know how hungry it is. And once you start eating, now it thinks like, oh, finally getting the nutrients that I deserve because you're under eating during the week, under nutritioning yourself during the week. Um, you'll be surprised how less hungry you are during cheat meals if you eat right and you're hydrated. Really, man. So start eating a little bit better during the week. High sodium, high micronutrients, high water. And by the time you you end your uh, you get to Sunday, you'll have three meals at the local Chinese, which again it's not the end of the world. You skip the chips, you have your Coke Light, Coke Zero, and then you, you know have one ice cream. Dude, I have it every weekend. Look at me. Look at this. What are you talking about? Train harder. All right, Xenomorph. Oh, shit. Yeah, there's coming on a new Alien movie is coming, right? Okay, so Xenomorph didn't get the picture, right? I put it in the title. I put it down below. I'm taking your money. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Uh, Biskumpf asks, uh, would you leave Thailand and go employed if that means you can join a team of like-minded individuals running a big research organization lab? Imagine people like you, Leo. I don't know about that. Um and you could start a research on whatever is useful and interesting with a nice lab and ginormous financial backing to run the research, which peptide degrades and how fast, blah, 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 la, 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 microdoses. So would I leave my um, boring research subjects? No, I would fucking not. <laughs> I was employed for five to six years. I made good money, or at, the, at least I thought it was good money. At that time, I thought it was great money. After inflation, it's it's pretty decent. It's pretty good money. Um, but why would I go employed after I'm self-employed? I, I work from home. I can spend time with, I cats, with my cats when I want. I can spend time with my wife when I want. And all the time that I'm not spending with my wife or my cats, um, I'm working. I'm making money. So why would I surround myself with other people who are employed and probably don't really want to be there because they're getting a salary. Like my income is directly correlated with how hard I work. So if I work fucking hard, guess what? I make a good amount of money. But when you're employed, there's a cap. 
And that cap is at five o'clock when nobody feels motivated to do more. Even when I got commission and I got fat commissions when I was a business consultant, financial business consultant, you know, you make a, a project, you finish a project within the deadline and then you finish it early. So the whole team also gets a bonus. It's still negligible compared to what you can make being self-employed. So everything you just mentioned, I could do myself. I don't need anybody else. I have the financial backing to do all of that. And actually I'm already doing that. I'm reviewing all of the scientific, scientific literature for anabolic amgenic steroids and putting it out there for free. Yeah, not behind the fucking paywall. Those, those membership websites will eventually be obsolete after I'm done. Yeah, you'll never have to pay for a membership site ever again because all of my videos will be fully fucking cited and there'll be videos, not rambling text. So anyway, would I work for somebody else for a fraction of what I'm making right now to do make content which I can do myself? Um, no. No, I, uh, I'm very happy where I am right now. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that's it. Uh, we did all the membership questions. Now we're going to go into the super chats. Uh, my right front deltoid is noticeably smaller than my left. What is the best way to bring up my right front deltoid to match the left? Um, no fap. And you know it's fucking true. Because all that cardio, man, is just ruining your front delt. So um, everything unilateral, right? Front raises, uh, dumbbell side raises, dumbbell presses, everything dumbbell. Everything free weight, everything dumbbell. Do a little bit of deep tissue massage therapy because there could be some adhesions or scar tissue that is limiting your range of motion. You'll probably notice that your right tricep is noticeably bigger than your left tricep because it's overcompensating for the right shoulder, right deltoid, that is smaller. Right, so stop the masturbation and then do everything unilaterally with dumbbells and give yourself six months and do some deep tissue massage therapy. Yeah, Iron Grid, what's up? I uh, got unlucky with mononucleus uh, due to the weather here. Uh, I can barely smell. So then pizza my brother's making. All right, well, I wish you all the best and uh, get well soon. Best dose of T-ball. Yeah, coming coming soon. Uh, let me scroll down. Of course, this week there's going to be no super chats. <laughs> How long have you been invested in crypto? How many years? Uh, 2015. So, yeah, that's a decade. Yeah, almost a decade, man. Almost a decade. Made plenty of mistakes, but, you know, um, I'm uh, in a net sense, I'm up. Uh, no question. Just want to say I appreciate all you do. Thank you very much. A funky, funk your daughter. Oh, not yet. Not yet. I have to bring more to the, more to the table than a two dollar super jet. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, but nice username anyway. Okay, let me see if I don't miss any member questions. Hmm. virgins oh god you guys are having fun amongst yourself uh oh, you guys figure it out brandon okay uh steve what are your what are your least favorite supplements to throw in your mouth at the same time <laughs> Meyer st john's were the life extension you know after uh, being in the fitness industry and and swallowing supplements since 15 years old i got very good at swallowing yeah, swallowing my pride at certain points and swallowing supplements. So I, none of the supplements that I take, um, I have a hard time with. I can swallow those giant two grams of uh, supplement XYZ tablets. No problem. St. John's Ward, life extension. Well, garlic I don't take because it makes me fart. So I have no, uh, no problem with any of it. All right, Jim Halpert also made a mistake super chatting about drugs. I told you guys. <laughs> but thanks for the 10 bucks, bro. You know what? What I'll do, since you guys are going to be butthurt, I'll ask my uh, timestamps guy 
Alvaro JD to write down these questions and then I'll answer them at the beginning of next week. But this week, I don't want to fucking do it, okay? Yeah, and if you keep super chatting me, I'm going to take your money. But I'll answer it next week. Uh, in a fasted state, I have glucose levels around 100 milligrams per deciliter, but my glucose in between meals is stiller, 95 to 110 after two hours. Okay, that's good. If my fasted glucose is uh, so high from the growth hormone pulse at night, I'm drug-free yet. No, it could be that you wake up in a stressed state where your cortisol levels are elevated when you wake up, and usually they are, are, are elevated anyway, but if you wake up in a rush, your alarm is going off like crazy, then your cortisol levels go up. Cortisol causes, uh, what was it, um, glycogenolysis? Is that the one? Where you release glucose, stored glucose from the liver into the bloodstream. And so it's a stress response, right? And nor norepinephrine helps a little bit with this as well. And that's why your fasting glucose levels are high. So um, next time you wake up on a Sunday, you don't set the alarm clock, you wake up, you know, super refreshed, then check your blood glucose levels, they might be 80, because you're not waking up in a stressed state. Where can I buy vigorous semen? Um, well, <laughs> I don't know, how much is it worth? It would be worth a lot, man. Yeah. God, the amount of money that I spend on fertility medications, guys, you guys don't want to fucking know. And if I have to do IVF, that's another 25,000 after three rounds. I think it's about 12,000 a round. Fuck, man. Should have had kids when I was 20. I wouldn't be in this position. <laughs> Uh, for all the guys, hey, Steve, you should have had your kids when you were 30. Um, no, man, I was not ready for kids, and I was a little snot and not financially secure. So, yeah, where are we? I had so many questions. Bro, is going to solve uh, demographic problems in the Western world? Yeah. Uh, I predict you buy more cats regardless. I don't know, man. I have nine, Adrian. <laughs> I have nine cats. So we have seven inside, two in, uh, two outside, and then I just I just need at least one child, right? at least fucking one. I mean, we're, we're doing the, the, the FSH for my wife now, so she might have like four eggs, ready? Right? Last time we had two, we did 2.5 milligrams uh, letrozole for five days, and then uh, they uh, they checked her. You know, with the ultrasound, they had two eggs. So we did IUI. That was the first round we did. And now we're doing FSH to be a little bit more aggressive with the uh, ovarian stimulation. So we probably get four eggs. And then we do the IUI again. Uh, put like 30 to 50 million uh, in there after washing and, and you know, filtering the good ones. Um, so th that increases the chances quite a bit. But uh, yeah, I think I should draw the line at uh, nine cats. Then focus on having kids, one or two. All right, where are we? What's up? Fair warning, Mohammed. This week is no drug questions allowed. Fluffy Chubby. Man, how, how far behind am I? Oh, okay, not too far. Okay, no question. Just want to say thank you for all the information and education you're giving out. It's one of the reasons my why my life has improved. Okay, awesome. That's good. That's why we're doing it, right? I want you guys to have a full life um, that I got later in life because I had to make too many mistakes and I didn't have much parental guidance. Or at least I had parental guidance, but I now now looking back at it. Um, I remember my dad told me when I called him out on a couple of his bullshit. I told him, uh, or he told me, he said, yeah, I made a lot of mistakes and, and you're going to not make those mistakes, but you'll make your own mistakes. <laughs> so that's very true. So like, you know, like when I have kids and my kids are like 20, 25 years old, they'll probably remind me of all of the mistakes I made and they won't make those mistakes, but uh, they'll make the same mistakes that my dad made because <laughs> they were not exposed to the bullshit or that bullshit. Mohammed, yeah, yeah, sorry, Brody. It's this week is no drug questions. So next week you can ask me again. Let's see. 
Cosby Roland, I have isolated systolic hypertension due to stiffening of the arteries. What can I do to get healthy again? I'm on 600 milligrams test. Should I stop or cruise? Yes, I would stop. If you have stiffening of the arteries, that sounds like plaque buildup to me. But uh, since you're not entirely sure what it is or not telling me, uh, I would get diagnosed, right? Full body MRI and a CAC score on your uh, coronary arteries to see, um, you know, how bad it is. And then look into um, seropeptase, natokinase, lumbroki uh, lumbrokinase, high dose vitamin K, high dose vitamin D3 to slowly but steadily get rid of that. If, if you're on 600 tests, of course, your blood pressure is up. Of course, the stress on your arteries and your heart is up compared to baseline, right? Being on super physiological or endogenously levels, right? So that's not super physiological, it's just normal levels. So if you go to 150 milligrams of test, um, I would stay on 150 milligrams of test or maybe even come off completely until you resolve this stiffening of the arteries because it doesn't sound good to me. You want your arteries to be nice and flexible. Joshua Holland, what's the best way supplement to last longer? Two-minute performance isn't impressive, apparently. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I never had an issue with that. You know, you can lose sensitivity by jerking off. Right? This is the downfall of no fap. Right? At one point, you're so sensitive that you bust a nut in two minutes. You know, maybe there's too much foreplay involved. You know, where you like get too excited and like, you know, you're making out and smooching and all that shit. And you still have to go through the door and take all your clothes off that by the time you actually put it in that you bust your nut. So um, if you're doing no fap, you might want to occasionally incorporate a fap to kind of lower the sensitivity down there. Um, yeah, and how often that is, that entirely depends on you. I would not result to those condoms that have the numbing stuff in there. Uh, condoms are a good way to reduce sensitivity. Uh, yeah, but the, the ones with the numbing stuff, I don't know, not a good idea. And, and besides that, I don't really know, man. It's never really an issue that I suffered from. Troy Hamilton, uh, I'm 175 centimeters tall, 20 years old. In December last year, I weighed 127 kilograms. Ooh, you're a big boy. Now I weigh 110. Congratulations on 16 kilos weight lost. I got blood work done three weeks ago. My testosterone 198 nanograms per deciliter. What can I do to lose more weight? Um, well, maybe now is a good time to improve your diet to the point maybe your testosterone levels can come up. I want you to watch uh, the over-the-counter supplement video, which improves all the testosterone levels. Let's see, e O D C testosterone. Hmm. Supplement testosterone. Man, I have too many videos. Oh, here it is. Give this video a watch, boosting testosterone naturally with over-the-counter supplements. Second video from the top. Give it a month. If it doesn't work, um, go somewhere where they can prescribe your TRT or self-prescribe it. I have many a video on how to self-prescribe TRT, but it's very likely that your testosterone levels are this low that, because you're aromatizing a lot. I mean, at 175 centimeters, um, right, 5'9", um, you are pretty chunky, even at 110. Um, you know, like I, I was 100. 20 kilos juice to the gills that was all muscle or the majority was muscle but you're probably aromatizing a lot so if you can get your body fat levels under control more you'll aromatize less and thus your testosterone levels go higher maybe you need to incorporate a little bit of a mini uh, diet break eat a little bit higher calories more nutritious foods and look into those over-the-counter supplements see how high your testosterone can be doing everything right being in a caloric uh, sufficient state for a while and then uh, if your testosterone levels don't really improve and nobody is willing to prescribe you, then maybe temporarily you take testosterone to get your weight down further, even though I'm not really for that. But if your testosterone is this low, um, you probably feel like us. I mean, I, I ran, out, ran out of Merck Ovitrel a while ago and then was out, uh, off of it for two weeks and I bought something locally, some underground lab, ATG, and it didn't really work. So guess what? I was 126 nanograms per deciliter and I felt like a little girl. So I can completely relate. 
it's not nice to feel like this. So try to eat healthy for a while and um, and, and use those over-the-counter supplements and see how much testosterone you can get. And if it doesn't really budge much or you don't feel any better, then you might need to go with TRT, um, at least until you're leaner and then try again, you know? Yeah, or, or inclomiphene, but I'm not in, not for inclomiphene. Anyway, I have a lot of videos on how to self-prescribe, self-medicate with ATG monotherapy, inclomiphene monotherapy, or TRT. And, and, you know, watch all of that and make your own decision. Uh, is there any reason to run a mitochondrial support stack while being on 20, in, in 20s? If you're financially secure, sure, but I don't think you need it yet. Maybe you can get benefit from some of the things that we discussed, like uh, methylene blue and uh, nicotinamide riboside or nicotinamide mo mononucleotide, even though NAD plus levels will not be that low when you're in your 20s. So I, I would just research all of the supplements that I mentioned there and then see what is beneficial. Yeah, see what we see what makes sense to you. People are complaining that they don't answer drug questions. Maybe you should just stop all of this completely. Eh? See where's, where are you going to go? <laughs> What's the alternative? Huh? Jim, I told you, we're going to answer this next week. Uh, let's see. All right. Also next week, guys, I'm going to tell you one more time. This is a no PED vigorous Q&A. This is the vanilla q and I put it right down. All right. I'm not in the mood to answer drug questions. Why? The questions are the same fucking questions every single week. Give me a break for one fucking week. Okay. If you can't deal with it, fuck off. <laughs> it's that simple. If you can't deal with it, get out and come back next week right i'll answer these questions next week but right now i'm not in the mood dude yeah this this all these super chats i'll answer it next week at the beginning i'll ask my timestamps guy to write write them down but i'll take your fucking money anyway uh what is steve's biggest fear why is that your fear uh not being able to have kids that is my biggest fear right now yeah with my wife um, and why is that my biggest fear? Because I accomplished everything else I wanted to accomplish already. I traveled the world. I, I married the, the best girl for me on the planet. Uh, I became financially secure. I became respected by the fitness industry. I did, um, I achieved more than I ever thought was possible doing what I love to do. And, um, <laughs> dude, what else is there? I can buy a sports car. Who the fuck cares about that? I want kids. And if I, my biggest fear right now is not being able to have kids. Yeah. Yeah. And that is, that is the worst fucking part of this entire journey the last year. So two more weeks, we'll do IUI. Then I'm going on cycle. I got enough semen samples frozen for multiple rounds of IVF, but after three rounds, we'll throw in the towel. Not going to adopt. No. No, we'll get another cat. Uh, all right. Dude, you don't... Chase, you don't have to pay me, man. <laughs> Chase, come on now. Come on. Uh, well, I'll see you at the Olympia. I'll, I'll, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. That's <laughs> this is how much a cup of coffee is right now. It's in America, right? Ten bucks. I super chatted it. Yeah. <laughs> Buy some diapers for future babies. I fucking hope so, man. I fucking hope so. Dosage of boron to lower SHBG, 800 test, 60 SHBG. Uh, you can go up as high as 12 milligrams per day, but it might not be enough to lower your SHBG. Um, yeah, and besides that, that's about it, you know? And you can use exogenous insulin to bring your SHBG down. You're not really natural, but it doesn't affect your testosterone levels. Um, exogenous growth hormone to bring your SHBG down, but you're no longer natural. So uh, maybe six milligrams boron in the morning, six milligrams in the evening, give that a month and see how much your SHBG dropped. 
And if it only came down to 50, uh, look into card green. Or not card green. Fuck. Proviron, 6.25 milligrams uh, once per day. Right? He didn't ask about drug. I'm giving him information. It's still okay. So 6.25 milligrams per viral monotherapy to bring your SHBG down. In many cases, it's not suppressive, even though in some people it is suppressive. With a testosterone of 800, I think you can get away with it. Um, and that might drop your SHBG from 60 to 40. Yeah, so that's, you know, one third of a reduction. And, and not have an effect on your LH, FSH, total testosterone, uh, but it might lower your estradiol, which prevents negative signaling on the HPTA also, right? Because proviron acts as a reversely binding aromatized inhibitor. All right. Uh, any thoughts on urolithin A? Yes, yeah, so one of my uh, VIP clients asked me about this and I researched it and it looks like a bunch of horseshit. So I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't waste my time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what made me the most happy during my life? Hmm. <laughs> The most happy. I think I was the most happy when I was traveling because I had money in the bank and I didn't have to work. That was great. And every day I woke up, I was like, oh, what cool stuff am I going to do today? Um, today I'm going to visit Angkor Wat. And the next day, Angkor Wat again. Uh, and the next day I'm going to rent a motorcycle and drive around. And the next day to some cool island. I had to film the whole experience. I have everything documented on my previous camera. I think that was the best period of my life. Um the most happy during my life i know man every weekend i spend with my wife is great you know when we went to the us we had a great time when we went to dubai we had a great time when we went to i don't know recently we went to patio we had a great time every time i spend time with my wife it's great so um like the last 10 years have been absolutely fantastic um but the most happy in any stretch of time simply because i didn't have to work was when i was traveling yeah and now I have like intermittent happiness, usually over the weekend, because during the week I uh, consultations and and sitting hours and hours and hours on PubMed reviewing scientific literature. Ugh. But somebody has to do it. Somebody has to do it, right? Sure, good mom. Ah, uh, no, no. Because then, the, the, you know, the, the mom will want to see the kids. And then you need to put some sort of clause in there where they carry your child. And uh, and I don't think it's the problem with my wife's ovaries. It's, I think it's the equality. So, you know, when you're older and my wife took Accutane and we got vaxxed, unfortunately, and, and you know, we did a couple cycles here and there, right? So maybe the equality isn't as good as a normal 40-year-old. Uh, but we eat healthy, we sleep right, we take all the supplements which are known to work. So IVF should work, and if it doesn't work, then it's end of the line. Then the lineage st stops here. Uh, somebody better figure out a way to do it. I mean, I mean, we can do a round of stem cells, you know. We well, can look into that, fly to Japan, meet, uh, meet Dr. Dil Khan. Shoot some stem cells in the uterus. All right, Bitcoin by that time will uh, probably be like 0 0.1 Bitcoin. <laughs> you spend how much on? Yeah, and you'll see that that will be. I'll do like three or three rounds of IVF, right? And it doesn't work. And then you shoot all these stem cells in there. Spend another, I don't know, twenty five thousand dollars, and then another round of IVF, and then it works. And then the kid is like fifteen. It just fucking hates your guts. You know? Fucking hates you. Spend half a million, no, not half a million, but close to a hundred thousand just to con just to conceive. And then one day they'll tell you that I hate you, Dad. Yeah, you, know, you mother you mother ungrateful, you know. At least my dad didn't spend so much money on me. <laughs> uh having a hard time sleeping on the last few weeks of my diet before the first competition i'm already taking 10 milligrams melatonin 40 milligrams magnesium three milligrams glycine at night any recommendations uh it's just part of prep you know you're on fat burners maybe take those a little bit earlier maybe replace the clen for ephedrine um 
and, and, and yeah, just limit your, limit your fat burners, add in a little bit of growth hormone before bed. Of course you need to cut that out two or three weeks before the competition. Uh, yeah. And then otherwise there's hardcore sleep aids, but they might also make you hold water. So the last couple of weeks of prep, when you're shredded, just accept that you won't be sleeping much. And if you do feel like sleeping during the day, during the day, grab that fucking opportunity because many of these, these opportunities don't come often. Um, so if you feel like napping and you're suddenly somewhere, just take a fucking nap. Just, just go to bed. Uh, sorry guys. I got a clock out for 10 minutes. I got to take a nap, grab those opportunities in, in the car, at the gym, wherever you can. Um, that's the way to kind of get a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, sleep in, but it's just the end of prep. When you're lean, sleep is difficult. And if you're on stimulant, stimulatory fat burners, it's just part of the game, you know? I uh, keep after it, Steve. I'll be happy for you guys. And I promise you all of this, whatever it costs will be worth it. Yeah, I don't really care about the price. Um, thanks, Chase, by the way. I don't really care about the price. It's just every month it's uh, the disappointment. I mean, Chase knows because he also tried for many months. It's just every month you hope and then you get, dude, it's easier to become a millionaire. <laughs> it's, it's easier to be a millionaire than to get your wife pregnant when you're over 40 years old. It, dude, I've never been, my patience have, has never been as tested as much in my life as now. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, Chase, how it feels, right? Your sex drive is not so great when you're off cycle and your motivation is not so great. And, uh, you know, when you get those death threats from uh, social media, you take it personally because your testosterone levels are not so high. So, yeah, I've been, I've been, um, my patience has been tested quite a bit. Yeah. So two weeks, we'll do one more round of IUI with fresh semen. And then I'm, I'm straight on the fucking gain train. Let TRT, TRT. Uh... Eka Grata Occult. Oh, what's up? Uh, thanks a lot for the America Health Seminar. Lots of useful stuff and productivity and health right there before I started. Uh, start my thesis. All right. There's guys who want to cite me now. <laughs> Steve, can I use you as a citation for my uh, school project? I'm like, dude, don't do that. The camp puts a citation with Vigor. Vigor, Steve said it in a YouTube video. <laughs> don't do that. But at least you get some ideas. Like, and this is one of the reasons why I cite all my videos now, um, because I know a lot of guys are doing research further, right? Whether that's for school or for themselves. So instead of holding all these studies hostage, like all these other asshole, it, well, they're not really educators, they're um, irritators, right? Asshole ir irritators that hold these studies hostage. I just study blah, 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 and they don't even put the full publication. I give you everything I found no matter how small, right? You can find it right down below. So uh, happy to hear that it's helping. Merrick Health video didn't uh, get so many views, but at least somebody is thankful enough to super chat me. Much appreciated. Igor, if I don't eat to the point, uh, if I don't eat to the point I want to throw up, maintain insulin sensitivity, optimize digestion, proper amount of uh, IG1G, will my waist grow much? No, no. And if, if your waist grows a little bit, it's probably the obliques and food volume. So, you know, as soon as you start dieting, everything will, uh, <clears throat> everything will come back down. Gain train or gain train. No, no more train, man. I, I swore that off 10 years ago. I swore that off 10 years ago. And dude, after reviewing 500 studies of the Trembolone, Man, that shit is fucking poison, dude. <laughs> Works well, though. Works well. Did you know that Trembolone is now considered an environmental um, endocrine disruptor? They put so many Phenoplex and Riverlord um, pellets into the cattle in some countries that the 17 beta est uh, estradiol and 70 beta Trembolone uh, from the urine of the cattle leaks into the soil and the groundwater and contaminates the entire area surrounding the farm and downstream to the point that a lot of the wildlife, especially fish, um, have altered uh, behavioral mating patterns and develop um, over testes. 
or other um, weird sexual characteristics. So trimbolone is now an environmental toxin. Yeah, so no more trim. Yeah. Dirk Diggler. All right. Well, I, I dig the username. Um, for the guy, what was the movie called? Uh, it's not Dirk Diggler, right? It's Boogie Nights. Boogie, man, that movie was fucking great. Uh, can I inject roids into my eyes to make them stronger? No, but TB500 is being investigated as a um, novel therapy for dry eyes and something else with the eyes. So that's being investigated, or times in beta 4, not TB500, times in beta 4. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, roids into the eyes, no. But uh, times in beta 4, uh, eye sprays, maybe at one point, Regen, Regen RX Biopharmaceuticals will have that past clinical trials, and then you can um, get that on prescription. So funny, no? Bioidentical hormones on prescription. This planet, man. Honestly. Honestly, this planet and the people on it. Well, yeah, it's wild about the uh, cow trend pee. It's crazy, dude. Like uh, there's 865. So if you type in uh, trend alone on PubMed, you get about 865 studies back. And now I'm at the, the 500th study from the top. So you go from the most recent down below because the most recent studies are more valid than the older studies. I'll still go down through them and then look for trend alone. And then, uh, you know, other uh, synonyms of Tremblon, Parabol, and et cetera. So it might be a thousand studies that I need to sift through. And then, dude, the, the first 200 is all about environmental uh, toxicity. <laughs> and once in a while, there's like, a, you know, a feed efficiency uh, study on uh, cattle, which there are also many. Um, so I'm, I'm now in the year 2006, I think, study-wise, 2006. So the, first, the 500 studies are up until 2006. I think the large majority of the studies are actually more recent than the older studies. And then uh, at one point, you'll get to the human studies, and then those are not available as a full publication, of course, as usual. Fuck. Um, yeah, so the, the, in the beginning, it's just cattle studies and environmental pollution studies. Uh, Trimbalone acetate, yes. Trimbalone acetate en enters the chat. <laughs> F in the chat for Trimbalone acetate. Let's go. F in the fucking chat for Mr. Tremble on acetate. <laughs> All right. Let's go, assholes. There we go. Good. All right. Let's move over to a couple of questions in the meantime. Uh, Steve, Bitcoin is going to 150, 175 in the next 8 to 12 weekish. I love these kinds of predictions. How do you know this? It's, it's stuck at the all-time high right now. It might stay there for a while and then shoot up. But where, where is it going to go? You never know, dude. Uh, then it's going to get destroyed along with every other equity. Your views? Yeah. I mean, it's realistic to start laddering out from 125,000 upwards. Um, and then, and then you yeah, know, based on a logarithmic regression. But it could go as high as 250. But you never know, right? The last time we thought we, we were going to have a double peak... And then it didn't go higher than 68,000, you know? So a lot of people got burned on that point. But when I saw the volume decrease and it broke the upward trends, I got out and I made a couple small trades, you know, uh, the, in the recovery phases. But then you see the dead cat bounce and it just doesn't get beyond that. So uh, where can we go? Well, first of all, we'll probably hover here until the, the, the Bitcoin halving and then there will be a supply chalk. And then, of course, everybody thinks that it's it should go up right away which it doesn't so people start to sell off panic i've seen this happen four times now um and then it will be a little dip and then it will slowly start to come up and then fomo will hit and i'll, I'll, I'll i would have been in since sixteen thousand. you know so if it goes to 125 or 250 i'm slowly laddering out with a couple small small trades in between um i'm not going to complain if it goes higher i'm not going to complain if it goes lower i i'll be in profit and then we'll wait uh one year after the peak when it starts to hit the electricity price give or take because of course the bitcoin halving means that the 
the unit price of one Bitcoin based on the electricity is going to double, give or take. So I think last time the average electricity price for Bitcoin worldwide was about $17,000 per one Bitcoin, right, for all of the mining involved. And if the, if the difficulty is being doubled, then it's reasonably to assess that the next time it comes down with inflation, the bottom is going to be approximately 35,000, right, based on the electricity price, because it shouldn't really go much lower than that, because this is where the miners buy. Why would you mine a fucking Bitcoin where you can buy it over the counter on spot, right? So, and you can compare brief the cycles if you can find the data on the, the, the unit price of Bitcoin. And of course, there will be some wicks here and there, right? FTX fucked it up, that guy's going to jail for 25 years. And I shouldn't complain too much because, you know, I was able to buy in pretty low at that time. Right, and I made a couple of bad trades in the meantime. Don't get me wrong, right? I made a couple of good trades, made a couple of bad trades. At one point, I had to follow in because I, uh, you know, it, it went higher or it, it reversed when I didn't expect it to reverse. That happens. But when you look at your portfolio and you're up, you can't complain. So I'll be up shortly, and all the extra money that I make, I will uh, ladder in at the dips. All right, lots of Fs. All right, what's up, Adam? Thanks for dinner, Steve. You're a legend. Yeah, I took everybody out to dinner. We were paid with Bitcoin money. <laughs> Adam's like, are you paying this with Bitcoin money? So yeah, of course. <laughs> not pay well, actually, it's not true because it's coming from my bank account. All the Bitcoin money is uh, stuck there or it's in Tether or another stable coin. Um, so yeah, uh, well, you, you just next time you just take me out to dinner back, right? Because YouTube takes 40% of your super chat. <laughs> So you just gave YouTube 40 bucks, dude. So much appreciate, man. It was good. It was good to meet you guys. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, hey, Steve, my mom has Hashimoto's. I have thyroid globulin antibodies too. I use per milliliter. Wake up very cold. Can't get warm until the afternoon. Maybe you're a lizard. You know, maybe you need some sunbathing to uh, bring up your body temperature. Uh, sorry, with a half grain of NTD a month ago. Any harm in bumping up the dose? Um, I would do your blood work first. Right? We, we know what to do, right? If you have Hashimoto's and your thyroid body globulin was this, um, but you don't know your total free T3, T4 thyroid stimulating hormone, then why don't you go check that before you bump up the dose and then slowly bump it up with blood work in between? You know, that is the healthy way to do it. All right, guys, I'm going to take a piss because um, I drank a lot of Coke Zero at uh, Cheesecake Factory today. So give me, and it's been an hour, so give me give me like two minutes. Yeah, I'll be right back. Let me let me post it here for all the guys that are joining later. All right. Be right back. All right. So funny, you know, I knew this was going to happen. Less people, because we're not talking about drugs. I'm like, ah, we only like Steve if he talks about performance enhancing drugs. Well, don't worry, you got a boatload of videos coming. Do you have the tokenization project of BlackRock? No, I just buy buy coins with utility behind it. I don't buy these small coins. 
it's it's i i don't even look at it <laughs> it's such a waste of time can you make quick buck sure uh, i can make money with other projects also so um did i wash my hands no no i did not i licked them clean <laughs> so no i don't uh thought it takes too much time man too much time sweet shirt thank you it's my favorite yeah it's my favorite so option contracts nope no just spot man just trade don't make it too complicated otherwise you have to do it full time and then you go i try to do it for a year full-time trading i was fucking miserable i do just do i look at the charts every day i decide if i want to sell or not <laughs> or if i want to buy or not but i'm not going to sit there just look at the markets because then you guys will get no videos and you still need to do you, you like this channel is now a passion project basically and at one point i'll dial it back like if if when my wife gives birth at one point or fucking another um then i'll go i'm going to reel it back because then i have another person to spend time with um but until the day comes i'm just going to pump out as much content and at this pace i'll probably do all the steroid videos and a couple more peptides, the best dose. And then, then I probably reviewed 30,000 studies or something. That means you guys have the best information that's up to date, or at least up until the time that the video was released of everything that's relevant to know. And we, we, again, with fully cited and, and that information will be there, will be valid for the next five to 10 years. So I'll go back to like one video a week or something. Blessed by God. Uh, Coach Steve, would your ebooks have any of them be updated recently? I've purchased four of them. Cheers. No. And it, it's it's very unfortunate because I know I can make like 20 ebooks and, and they'll all get copied. I mean, it, it, it you know, I'm not going to be like uh, Greg Duchette, just chase websites with, uh, you know, DM, you know, DC, DMCA takedowns and, complain and do hard sales and that kind of stuff and then you know those ebooks are a little bit old so maybe i should just fucking throw them on a discount and take them offline at the end of the month uh april do you guys want to do that do you want to do that do like a 25 percent off sale for all of the ebooks and then take them offline because i i don't have time to update them um and if i do update them and i spend so much time on them then people are just going to copy them and it it, it wouldn't we really be um feasible to do that um because I'll, I'll just be working for free when in reality if i want to work for free i i think i'm better off making youtube videos for you guys to enjoy so no there i, I should update them but i'm i think from a time to benefit like financial benefit, it doesn't make sense and i think it might be best just to offer them all at the 25 percent discount and then take them offline um because you know it's it, it's due for an update which i don't have time for <laughs> so let me know if you want 25 percent discount on all of them uh let's see my fasting blood glucose is 5.8 um what that's nanomoles per liter right so let me convert that uh glucose Nine, oh, milligrams. I don't know what the millimoles is for that. Off the top of my head. These converting websites, man, so annoying. One second, dude. 5.8. Five why doesn't this fucking thing work 104 all right 104 so that's a little bit out of the range right do i have to go to ketogenic for a week to improve then two and four is okay no in letters not numbers uh improve insulin sensitivity or 
uh, can I just reduce my carbon take? I, I would just reduce your carbon take, you know, maybe 50% of the carbs that you're eating now, add a little bit of cardio for two weeks, and then restore insulin sensitivity. But if you have a very physical job, then yes, you might be able to restore insulin sensitivity in as little as a week. So if you're on a bulk, right, with that, uh, okay, you're doing the nandrol and only cycle with a little bit of HCG. Um, I would just, just drop your carbs by half for a week or two, and then your fasting blood glucose levels will come back nicely into range, especially if you have a physical job where you're moving around a lot. All right, so everybody wants to see the ebooks on a discount. All right, let me set that up tomorrow or, or Monday, and then uh, we'll just run a special for April. And then on May 1st, it's not a joke, by the way. We're, we're not doing April Fool's jokes. I'm 40 years old, and when it comes to discounts, I don't fuck around. You know, I wanted to do a video about all the educators that I respect, super cynical and stuff. It'll probably bring a lot of negative attention to the YouTube channel. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, even though I was uh, kind of laughing at uh, scripting it out, I don't think it's a good idea. You know, you guys know we're just going to be on the list. It'll be so cynical that, uh, yeah, people will definitely get butt hurt. And again, after all the fucking death threats that I got through Dave Palumbo for a 90 second, uh, Remark, I learned my lesson, man. Fuck, even my wife got death threats. Fucking hell, man. Ugh. Uh, thanks for all the knowledge that you're sharing with us. Just recently bought off-season bundle. It's great. All right. Yeah, sorry you got... Oh, and you're super chatting also. So, uh, yeah, sorry the discounts come a little bit too late. But the estrogen ebook is also going to be on a discount. So... You know, at least you won't have to cry about it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's scroll up a little bit. Data, the, the, nobody, no, people are only here for drug questions, man. Yeah. I know a guy that works on his PhD about antidepressants that are found in the fish. Yeah, I think that's also uh, very common because our bodies don't break them down 100% and eventually you piss it out and it goes into water from the ecosystem. Yeah, you'll be surprised how many drugs end up in the ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate. And and uh, many of them, they can't even uh, be, uh, you know, filtered out at the, at the, at the plants. Because they use they use bacteria, right? They ferment the excrement and break that down. But the bacteria can't uh, transform the some of the medications. Mm -mm, let's see. Oh. Let's go down again. Amazing. Thanks, Steve. I'm on uh, day two of keto and craving carbs. Yeah, that will be for that for a couple of days. So um, keep going. Add more vegetables to your meals. And uh, that usually helps. Hey, not, not from Dave himself, from the audience, dude. I be, it happens every time, man. I, I mean, I got a boatload of death threats around the liver king time, so I'm kind of immune to that shit. But I think some of his audience, Dave, Dave's audience, is just... I know, be crazy. Um, so of course everybody wanted me to debate him, and I honestly thought about it until I got until my wife started getting death threats. And I'm like, okay, if I'm going to debate Dave, then I'm exposing myself to his audience, and some of those guys are absolutely batshit insane. So if all the people, all the intelligent people, already moved over, I mean, the amount of comments that I got, I unsubscribed for Dave a long time ago, and now I follow you and you know more educated people. Um, if I already if I already got all of the subscribers from his channel, why would I subject myself to the subscribers that are sending me death threats, and my wife death threats? Right? It doesn't make sense. So it's it would be a waste of time. And imagine if I go there, and you know the debate goes in a way that where he either starts yelling or I make him look like a fool, then his audience is even more pissed off, um, and then I get more death threats. So no thanks, man. I learned my lesson. Don't call out Dave because his audience or some some of his audience are absolutely crazy and they'll come after you. So if you want to follow the guy, go right ahead.
Go read it. And what's the next expo we can see you at? I'll tell the same thing to Dave, by the way. When we, I'll, I'll go to the Mr. Olympia this year. Yeah, if I see Dave, I'll tell him. So, listen, I wanted to debate you, but your audience is fucking nuts. <laughs> so, no thanks. No thanks, Dave. Sorry for saying that your first cycle was retarded. <laughs> Which it is. Let's be honest. Uh... I interpret the fact that I overpaid 25% as a donation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I live off donations now, man. This, uh, this is the only way I can feed my cats. <laughs> what is this? What race are your cats? They're cats. <laughs> oh, that's the species, right? Uh, are there races for cats? I mean, I have, I have a token black cat. I mean, it has to be, you need a black cat. Otherwise it's right. You're, in, you're doing it improper. I got a lesbian cat. I got a gay cat and, uh, and, a, and, a, and, um, what, what, a, what is it called? A, uh, a sexually confused cat. No, that's not true, but my cats are all Sphinx cats. The two outsides are, uh, I don't know, a mix of something as one is black and one looks like a tiger. So we named him, uh, uh, well, ninja and tiger, because uh, ninja you can't see, right, in the dark. <laughs> and tiger looks like a tiger. So very, um, very appropriate. And all the Sphinx cats that we have, uh, we named after Legend of Zelda characters. Uh, since, since we were short of Ganon, that's the one that we got the latest. And guess what? Our latest cat uh, is destroying everybody else. <laughs> Shit attacks unannounced. So, yeah. Uh, Chase, if the internet shut down indefinitely and social media was no longer a thing and we all had to go back to work, fuck, man. That's my greatest... No, not really, actually. I'll be okay. Um, but hopefully, I can get all of the money out of Bitcoin by that time. Uh, would you go back into personal training? What would be your move? I'd probably real estate. Yeah, refurbishing houses, that kind of stuff. Not that the real estate... There's probably a real estate crisis coming up, so I would wait a couple more years and then buy in like at the later part of the real estate crisis where um you know the, the people are really desperate and they need to sell their houses for like 50 percent of what they're actually worth and then i buy i'll buy and refurbish and sell whether that's in thailand or another country that's what i would do but personal training honestly dude after 12 years of coaching i'm not sure if i'd want to expose myself to somebody who needs guidance that much because it fucking drains you man like the guys that i help right now on on you know 10 hour consultation packages those guys are all financially secure they're the only reason why they hire me is they're they're too busy to do research right so those guys are not lost causes but a lot of people that you have to do personal training for they're lost causes they're unmotivated they're fat they're lazy they don't know what to do. They need a friend and they need a therapist. Right? That's 90% of the personal training clients, or at least the gen pop personal training clients. And unless you get some superstar that again is too busy and it just needs somebody to push you. Okay, those are great clients, but the large majority are just lazy. And then for an hour, an hour and a half, and I chase you worked as a personal trainer yourself, you can probably confirm this. For an hour, hour and a half, um, you're there some sort of mental support. And at the end of the day, you're just emotionally and intellectually drained. And it, I felt the same after a while with some of the clients uh, until I started increasing my rates, the bodybuilding clients, complaining, whining, the diet is hard, I want to eat this, I want to eat that. You know, after a while, it's just like, you are killing my enjoyment of this sport. <laughs> so I increased the rates. And then, you know, I, I let go of those clients. So um, I would probably not do personalized services if it wasn't for the internet. Um, I, I would probably sell houses, yeah, to people who are financially secure because they're just much easier to work with. And that, that's just a hard reality. You know, people who are financially secure are much easier to work with than people who are on their last dollar because they have a boatload of questions. And when in reality, they should be asking those questions themselves. What can I do to improve my financial security? You know, fitness is a luxury. <laughs> you can you can drop that. You know, I dropped my, my fucking fitness at times when I had no money to my name either. 
So for me and Chase, both both of our sakes, fingers crossed they will not shut down the internet. Yeah, because we needed to survive. No woke cat. Uh, no. Ladyboy cat. Yeah. I need a jackal. I would like to get... I, I was talking with Jared Feather today, and he was like, yeah, I wanted to get an F3. And I was like, oh, you're fucking Savannah cat. That would be so cool. Like, that, that, like almost wild. <laughs> Dude, if I if I build if everything goes well with crypto, I'll build a house in about two years here in Thailand, and I would like to like to get a fucking farm. Yeah, or zoo, not a farm, a zoo. Get like uh, I would like to get one of those foxes, but I think it's too hot in Thailand. Get a savanna kit and uh, a serval and a fox, and uh, yeah, I don't know, make a YouTube channel about that or something. <laughs> You could probably get more money and views. Yeah, and less death threats, that's for sure. When I tell like when I tell people that are not in the fitness industry about this life, right? I, I talk about drugs on YouTube and then there's a lot of crazy people and uh, that are just calling each other out for you know the smallest things. Like uh, Greg Duchette's got an entire YouTube channel dedicated about calling people out and reaction stuff. And people look at me and say, why are you in this space? It sounds fucking toxic. And it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, personal training is the worst. Yeah. Yeah, Chase knows. Arnold has a pig. Yeah, that's true. And he has a donkey also. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind, man. Capybaras, hell yes. Fuck it. Two capybaras and a little pool. <laughs> Can you imagine? And those animals weigh like 100 kilos when they're like fully adult. So you, you go into the pool, right? You start wrestling your capybaras. And then the whole day you bring them like, uh, you know, all these fucking carrots and stuff. And then you get like a giant hamster and some sort of, um, yeah, or a uh, capybara hamster, right? <laughs> they, they look like hamsters. And then uh, some sort of pig. I would love it, man. But like, like a whole rye. A rye is like how many? How many feet is that? Rye to uh, acre for you Americans. One rye is about zero point four acres, so that's more than enough. It would cost a fortune in Bangkok, of course. And then we have like a little zoo. Make one video a week. <laughs> I would fucking love it, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah. So how much money do you spend on food every day, every every month? I spend about four thousand dollars <laughs> on cat food and vegetables for my capybaras and my uh, cats. <laughs> uh there's something called pre ejaculation. There's yeah, uh, a pre cum. Yeah, there's a semen in there as well. Yeah, I was talking about pulling out is effective. So for Chase Irons it was effective, but then he found out he had zero sperm in his semen. <laughs> So, yeah, he didn't even need to. And my wife told me, said, listen, if we're not successive, uh, if we're not successful, then at least we're not have to use birth control because it's so fucking difficult to pre get pregnant that don't even need an IUI or, or anything of the sorts. I'd like to own a Gibbon and make him sing at 4 a.m. Yeah. There's, there's like, so before they, when they, they built a, some sort of, I don't know, shed next to us, they had like this, this Thai family that brought all their chickens and they would fucking go nuts at like 4.30 or 5 o'clock when the sun would come up. And you can't do anything about it because then you're the foreigner, you know, that gets booted out of Thailand. So at one point I just went there and said, listen, guys, there's, can you build like a little shed? I'm willing to pay for it. And then whenever we'd have bio bros, when that was still a thing, I would pay them a thousand baht <laughs> to bring those chickens inside. So, so at least for like the three, four hours that we have bio bros, it would not be interrupted because they would be so loud, dude. So loud. Now there's a Muay Thai gym next to my house. That's why I'm ready to build a house somewhere far and then build a house right dead in the center of a rye of land. And then, uh, you know, build a little moat with some crocodiles. 
nobody uh nobody could be able to enter growing up and still now there are 10 peacocks at my house my dad had like 100 pigeons wow must have smelled terrible What could you eat like every day a month straight? Well, I eat the same food every day, man. I eat eggs, chicken, salmon, beef, and, and, and a protein shake. And I eat that every fucking day. And I eat vegetables and some chia seeds and, uh, you know, some nuts, uh, mixed, mixed seeds and avocado as my fat sources. And I eat that every day. I could eat that every day for a month straight. <laughs> I, I really don't care. I know that it's very nutritious. I meet all of my micronutrient requirements. And I, uh, even though I don't really know how to cook, it tastes good enough for me to enjoy it. And I, dude, I've been eating very basic since I was 18 years old or 17 years old since I started really cooking. And um, I think it's one of the reasons why I still look, you know, somewhat okay. <laughs> you know, one of the reasons why Mike O'Hearn still looks somewhat okay in his 50s. I think it's the food, man. I think it's the food. Is coach doing some kind of sport right now? Is bodybuilding a sport? Not really, right? No, I don't do a sport. No. I lift things up and I put them down at the gym. Do you remember how much food you were eating on a bulk cycle? Yeah, about 600 to 1,000 carbs, depending on the activity levels. I would cycle through the carbs and then protein would be, I don't know, 200 grams, 225 grams per day, because I mean, eating that many carbs is protein sparing. So you don't need so much protein. And then we'll have a little bit of vegetables every meal. So and I have like two cups of rice, six meals, <laughs> seven meals, and then like a little bit of protein, like four, four to six ounces and a little bit of vegetables, maybe six ounces. And then and then I would eat that the entire day through. Yeah, good times. Oh, yeah, and a little bit of chia seeds. Uh, I know you're a fan of cheese seeds with meals. What kind do you get? The black ones, uh, I grind them, soak them. Yeah, the black ones. Yeah, I just get the cheapest ones. Sometimes it's black, sometimes it's mixed, black, white, and red. Uh, whatever's on discount, man, then I buy in bulk. So I don't soak them. I add them to meals, and then usually it absorbs a little bit of moisture from the meal, right? So I add one tablespoon, and I think it really helps with skin quality and insulin sensitivity, and you get a boatload of micronutrients. And then, of course, it's not really omega-3s, but it's alpha-lipoic or alpha-linoic acid, and it converts into omega-3. Uh, but it's a healthy source of fat. Yeah, so I've been doing that for, I think, a decade. Yeah, good for fiber, good shits, minimal wipes, good stuff. They have sports leagues in Thailand. Yeah, of course, man. They have... Uh, all kinds of sports leagues. It's a big country, 60 or 70, 72 million or 65 million or something like that. So uh, they have everything you could possibly have in the Western world, now, including sports leagues besides Muay Thai. Do they have football? They have an, a, a national weightlifting team. Um, they have rugby at schools. I'm not sure if they have a rugby team. I'm not sure if they have a baseball team, uh, but I know they have rugby at some, uh, some of the schools, right? That's the UK version, not the American version. So that's the, the real hardcore version where you break your legs and noses and stuff. Um, yeah, they have all kinds of sports, man. People, people in Thailand are very active. Yeah, they love being outside, doing stuff, having fun. Has the coach ever played soccer? Not since high school. <laughs> but yeah, they used to play uh, soccer after high school all the time. Yeah, it was still better than doing your homework. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I sucked at it though Jamie, Jamie Oliver uh, Steve do you still use the all year round supplement stack that you have in your website yeah, I think I use most of it I, that's also due for an update I, well, I, it's on the to-do list but I, I probably want to get through those steroid videos first so uh, I think I use most of it let me, let me quickly go through it right now Let's see, articles, supplements, man, the website also needs an overhaul. So much to do, so little time. Which 
average Steve year on supplement. Man, it's already four years old. Holy moly. Hey, let's see. Multivitamin, still take that one. Vitamin B100, still take that one, albeit that I split it up. Uh, vitamin C with each meal, still do that. Uh, vitamin E, yeah, 200 IOs, I still take that. Vitamin D3, 5,000 IOs, still take that. Vitamin K, one capsule, still take that. Magnesium, glycinate, citrate, yeah, still take 200 milligrams of magnesium with each meal. N is still 16, 2,000 milligrams per day, still take that. Uh, reduced glutathione I stopped taking because I do intravenous glutathione, but this is still a good way to uh, get it in. The OPTAC, the reduced version. Uh, Tudka I take, 250 milligrams per day. So not 500, but I'm not on cycle. And I take Atka, not Tudka, because it's uh, available here. Tudka is not available in Thailand, so I take Atka. Then methane I don't take because I don't need it, my estrogen levels are balanced. Calcium deglucrate, uh, I don't take because my estrogen levels are balanced. Still take fish oil with each meal, six capsules. Uh, krill oil, I don't take right now, but I would take it on cycle again. Uh, GLA, I haven't ta taken in a while, but I would take that on cycle. Uh, I would probably take the blackcurrant oil um, because it has a little bit more uh, GLA compared to the evening primrose oil. Uh, yeah, I would take that on cycle. I would take the ubiquinol 600 milligrams per day. Uh, Shilajit fulvic acid, I don't take right now. PQQ, I don't take right now. Boswellia extract, I'm taking right now, but I'm getting uh, taking it out again because my knees feel totally fine, so I don't need it. Curcumin, I haven't taken in a while. Uh, I might get that back on cycle. Astragalus, I haven't taken in a while. I might add that back in on cycle. Sitch bergamot, same. I don't take that now. My lipids are perfect. Red yeast rice, um, I don't think that's required anymore because I wrote this before. Is that it was a thing? So I could take that off, even though some people still prefer red yeast rice because, ooh, medications. Uh, L-carnitine, L-tartrate, orally I don't take because I have injectable L-carnitine right now. Taurine, I still take 5,000 milligrams per day. 5-HTP, I still take because I'm off the SSRI. Melatonin, I take uh, about 3 to 10 milligrams, depending on uh, how much I need. Tonight, I will take 10 milligrams because, well, we'll be going on late. Uh, Ashwick on the root extract, I don't take. Gorilla Dream, I take uh, occasionally. Oregano oil, I don't take anymore because my digestion is absolutely perfect. Apple cider vinegar, I take with every meal. And that's about it. Yeah, so it's besides two or three supplements, this, this uh, article is still pretty much fucking up to date. Yeah, let me link it down below. So I hope that gives you the answer that you're after. Any good recommendation for a good blood pressure meter? Well, it's linked down below. It's the Armoron 7. Is it super accurate? No. But all, are all home uh, blood pressure monitors, blood pressure cuffs super accurate? No, they are not. So what you do is you take the, the right arm and the left arm and you take the average. Right? Armoron 7. It's linked down below with an Amazon link. It's under every video. What are the best gyms in Thailand? Visiting for the second time, I want to see good gyms while I'm there. Uh, Muscle Factory, Bangkok, and Pattaya are good. Um, they're a little bit weathered now because these gyms are a little bit older, but you'll still find the best community of people in Muscle Factory, Bangkok, or Pattaya. And they're probably the biggest. Then there's in uh, Bangkok, there's BPC uh, Gym, you know, Body Protection Compound. Now it's actually from Ben. So Ben has a gym in Singapore and in, uh, in Thailand, he's an IFB pro. And he has a gym in Ice Store close to Prompong BTS. That's a good gym. I train there occasionally. Great air conditioning, gym Leco equipment, uh, nice people there. Then there's Boost Fitness. It's a little bit out of town. Boost, uh, that's owned by TT, uh, the first IFB pro in men's physique. Great physique, super nice guy. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive. I think day passes are about a thousand baht because he doesn't want uh, riffraff in there. It's a little bit more an exclusive gym, a little bit more trendy. Um, a lot of people in that area are very, very rich. So you might see some supercars in front of that gym. But it's it's well maintained. It's very clean, uh, very good, high quality equipment. It's probably the best equipped gym from a um, equipment perspective. Of course, I'm saying that best equipped gym in Thailand. Um, my muscle factory has the most equipment, but a lot of it is refurbished and some of it is just downright shit and Bart knows it. 
um, but it at least fills up the space. So um, still, Muscle Factory is, you know, like a nice hardcore bodybuilding gym, a little bit of rust, a little bit of chalk, a lot of sweat, and uh, a lot of bent dumbbells, and, you know, that's what we like. Uh, what else? Uh, the Brick in Patty is a good gym. Also a little bit trendy, like Boost. You know, mostly Thai people train there. Uh... Kit, I can't really remember. I haven't been there in years. Um, Chiang Mai, you better not off. Better off not going to the gym because you might run into Mr. Blackmail, and then he'll start rambling on your ears that he needs to. That he's the smartest guy on the planet, and that you need to sign up for his membership site. So when you go to Chiang Mai, just don't go to the gym. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's about it, man. But uh, Google search usually brings you some good gyms as well. What type of vitamin E? Uh, I took the, the palm oil toco, but I took it offline. Now, right now, I took the mixed tocotrienols and a little bit of tocopherols, or a little bit of tocotrienols, tocopherols and a little bit of tocotrienols. Can't remember, it's, in, it's a link down below. I haven't looked into that shit for a while. Evolutionary performance. Steve, my question is, I lost 107, uh, 107 pounds thanks to you and a few others. Awesome. Trying to coach. Uh, I have before and after is my experience, but I wouldn't a P and un or similar certificate help me as a future coach. Dude, I have zero certifications <laughs> and I still got clients. So um, if you don't have any clients yet, you might have to do some pro bono work to get the results, right? Get the before and after picture, start helping a couple people. Could be friends, could be family members. You need to show that you can results, uh, get results with other people besides yourself. So uh, maybe cold DM a couple people that you are willing to help them for free if they're willing to commit to three months for before and after pictures. And after that, after the three months, they'll have to pay regardless. Um, and then you get maybe five or 10 people together and, and just post testimonials, you know? Uh, luckily for me, I, I got results with my wife and then I was filled fast, you know, uh, filled fast with clients. So I never had to do testimonials. I never had to do before and after pictures. I never posted my clients. It was all word to mouth. And since I always have little competition, um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm well sorted with clients. Even now people are in my inbox willing to pay $5,000 a month to be coached. I say no. <laughs> if you want to bring me out of retirement, it's 100K. Yeah, no joke. 100K. It's $25,000 a month for four months minimum. So uh, until you get to my point, you're going to have to do some pro bono work. And I, I coached plenty of women, uh, plenty of people for free, women and men back in the day until I got enough reputation. But it's uh, once you get that reputation, then, you know, you got enough clients and then you just keep increasing the rates. So you don't have to deal with the, 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 the pesky assholes. Thanks, Matt. I think IGF one is great. Yeah. You even have videos about it. Uh, Hey Steve, I saw your recent episode with Chase Irons. I wasn't to ask your opinion on mega dosing vitamin K and the, to and the types of uh, K you would recommend and what dose. So it really depends on how bad your CAC score is. So I normally, which I just mentioned in the 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 what it's the year-round supplement stack uh, that I just revealed, I think two thousand two hundred thirty micrograms of vitamin K year-round is more than enough. But if you have plaque buildup, then you need seropeptase, natokinase, lumbrokinase, vitamin K at higher dosages, and vitamin D three at higher dosages. But it really depends on how severe your CAC score is, right? So it could be. You know, I think what Chase, he took a brand, I linked it at, at, at the podcast, and I think he took like, what was it, 50, 50 milligrams vitamin K per day, something like that. I can't remember what it's, it, but it's in one of the podcasts. So, and, and about a lot of vitamin D3, we, we went to a seminar with Dr. Eric Serrano, and he would administer 300,000 vitamin D3 to bodybuilders with a high CAC score. Right, with plaque buildup and reversed it. Yeah, concentrated K. Yeah, it's not ketamine. <laughs> this is like a concentrated K. This is like a crisscross, you know, that, that 
that uh, rap group like terrible um you know like 90s wordplay on real world but anyway if, uh, chase what was the dose of that concentrated k let me look it up concentrated k no oh, it's the first result on google the original oh 30.5 milligrams k complex oh this is a this is a multivitamin wait a minute brand concentrated k what the hell why don't i get the results that i'm after We're showing you stuff that ships to Thailand. Oh, fuck off. Well, I can't find it. It's called Concentrated K. Two pills a day is what I did. One in the morning, one in the PM. Wow, my wow, God. 60, 60 milligrams uh, vitamin K complex. Well, it worked. I love me some ketamine. That's right. Yeah, I took that once. Never again. <laughs> 10 minutes of wondering if you're breathing or not. <laughs> no fucking way. Uh, am I breathing? Two seconds have passed. <laughs> am I breathing? Another second has passed. Oh my God. Yeah. Hey, hole, is that the real red pill? I don't think you need to need to take drugs to to open your eyes, man. I don't think you need to take drugs for anything in life, but it but sometimes it helps. I mean, uh, LSD made me realize that I didn't want to live in Holland anymore. So uh, then it took a while before I was able to exit. But um, yeah, yeah, Rafael. Also, you're gonna be disappointed, bro. We don't do drug questions on the vanilla Q and A, but we'll answer it next week. I'll take your money. Yeah, I'll take your money. Timestamp Sky will uh, write down your question and send it over. Sucks, right? Ah, oh, so disappointed. Uh, one pill, 25 milligrams K2, MK4, half a milligram MK7, 5,000 micrograms K1. So that's five milligrams. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty stacked, man. Two tablets of that. No, Chase Irons was able to reverse his uh, a small CAC score. So it fucking works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Heard of Cerebrium. Saw a neuroscientist and he was me off Cerebralacin, but I'm like, nah, nothing can replace. No, I haven't really looked into it. No, there's so many so many of these neuro um so many of these neuropeptides out there i'll do a, a little cycle of cerebral license soon yeah uh well, let's see what else is fun to answer as you got a 30 minutes left i think i'm gonna go to the bathroom again yeah, you know what? You guys uh, uh, fill up the chat with uh, questions. And then it will go another 30 minutes. But I have to pee again because I drank way too much Coke Zero. And I, well, I almost finished this water bottle again. So be right back, guys.
And we're back. Uh, <laughs> Barbara Drug Talk asked something else. Tell you, it, 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 it never ends, man. <laughs> it never ends. <laughs> it never ends. Oh, you should see my DMs. Oh, I did it to myself, right? <laughs> I did it. He wanted to be the drug guy. So now everybody goes to me for drug questions. Opinion on Dr. Baker's criticism of cholesterol. Um, yeah, all these carnivore guys says that cholesterol is not the end of the world, right? But they cherry pick studies. And, um, and many of these guys are on TRT. And I don't think there's any um, uh, promising results on high cholesterol levels on TRT. So um, you can you can choose who you want to listen to, you know? It's... it's uh, I would proceed with caution. Chiang Mai made me realize how amazing of a city Bangkok is. Yeah, Chiang Mai is pretty laid back, man. It's very quiet, small town. It's still a nice town. A couple big gyms. Uh, you know, you can go to Doi, uh, what is it? Doi Su Tep. Um, it's a little bit close. You can walk those steps up. The best thing about Chiang Mai is renting a motorbike and then doing the Mayon Son Loop. So you, you drive to Pai. And then you go on to Pang Mapa, which have a very big cave. It's called Tamlot, so you can walk through there. And then you drive to, is it is it Mei Sariang? Anyway, you do the Mei Son Loop, so you just drive around. And then at the end, you get to Doi and Tanon, and you drive up the mountain. It's about two and a half kilometers. Um, then you get to the top, and you're fucking cold. Yeah, that's a great trip, man. It takes a week. Um, but that's the best thing about Chiang Mai, renting a motorbike. You know, you get an N-Max or an X-Max and then you start driving through the mountains. And then in Pai, you do some mushrooms. And you just don't tell anybody about it. <laughs> of course, the next day you don't drive, you you take at least one day to reflect on your experiences. That's what Pai is known for, drug. Where are we? Oh, super chat. Is there any supplement that can help minimize the negative health effect of daily alcohol consumption? No. No. But antioxidants offset a lot of the negative effect of alcohol, at least regarding fertility. That's something I found in the scientific literature. Um, so, no, it's better to drink alcohol maybe once every three months. Um, and if you want to take a drug of choice, take another drug that isn't so destructive to your organs. Like alcohol is probably the, the, one of the most destructive uh, drugs that you can take <laughs> for your organs. Um, I would look into something like microdosing LSD mushrooms or, or, or weeds. You know, it's probably less invasive to your overall health than alcohol is. Of course, alcohol is socially accepted. So you have a lot of friends to drink with, um, but you don't have to, man. Yeah, you don't have to. I was literally about to ask, what what is it? Is it being reduced? Uh, Steve, do you know a lot about autophagy and its effects on loose skin? I'm not entirely sure fasting will help with loose skin because I fasted so many times and my skin only gets looser as I age. So, I, I think it's just part of life, man. It's just part of life. I mean, you, you see, uh, you know, Flex Lewis, he just posted a video, I think, on his Instagram page. And he's my age. He's also 40 or 39. And he's, of course, he was, he was always shredded. And then you see a video, and he's got a little bit of loose skin on his lower abs too. It's just, you know, and this guy was fucking peak physical... Let's see, Flex Lewis. I can't see it like this, but anyway, watch that video on his channel. You see that he has a little bit of loose skin in the bottom as well. Of course, he still looks like fucking killer. It just comes with age, man. 
it's just part of life. Why fight it? Why waste your time fighting all these little trivial things? Oh, LSD, stick to weed. I bet that I... The opposite, dude. The opposite. Weed is for boys. LSD is for men. Uh, I love it when you talk about weed, but I never liked weeds. Stop spamming or I'll fucking kick you. Uh, does collagen synthesis help tighten skin like Nandra, like uh, GHK Copper does? This question is definitely not direct related. I mean, it might help to bind the filaments with tight skin, but dude, I take like 40 grams of collagen per day and I still have loose skin. So it's it's just part of the game. When you get older and if you've, if you've been bigger or fat or as you get older, I think your skin just loses elasticity elasticity could collagen and anivar tighten it up slightly if you're low body fat levels yeah maybe maybe but it will just get worse as you age so it's it's just and of course alcohol doesn't help anything with oxidative stress doesn't help your skin um but you know liposuction might help and then you wear a waist trainer for like eight weeks you know, to kind of tighten everything back together. But then you're literally removing whatever was giving you loose skin and you'd stick it back together. But discuss that with a surgeon. I'm certainly not an expert on this subject. Driving a motorbike to and from Pi on a CNX is a beauty. Yeah, they said it's a Honda CNX. Yeah, 100, 125, 150 cc, depending on the... Oh, it's not CNX, from Chiang Mai. That's the... Well, PCX. PCX, Honda PCX. Yeah, but it, the PCX is good, or an NMAX from Toyota. Yeah, it's a, it's a great trip, man. Do you have any pics of all your cats? No. Do I have any pics of my cats? I'm terrible at taking pictures, man. I have a picture of my wife in an iglo. That I have a picture of. Uh, let's see. My wife takes all the pictures. It's all potty of bullshit. Where are my cats, bro? is the latest one doesn't focus right so cute anyway i'm not sure if i'm i got all the things that i should be showing uh anything else this is the outside cat So after the gym, I come back and then these cats show up and uh, I pet them for a good 10 minutes and then they're happy. Feed them. Uh, let's see, where are we? I heard vitamin C will push my ADHD meds uh, out of my system. Yeah, apparently vitamin C helps with the metabolism of some drugs. Uh, how should I time my vitamins then? Any supplements to improve effectiveness? So you take your ADHD meds first, and then maybe later in the day, uh, you take your vitamin C. But I'm not entirely sure which drug interaction it is. So uh, I'm not entirely sure how you should do that. But maybe space them away from each other. That would be my suggestion. Uh, Marion, how much time do you spend a week creating your YouTube content? If you'd have to start your channel from scratch now, what would be your strategy? Um, I think spend about 50 hours a week. Yeah, 50 hours, maybe more. I mean, I do about one hour consultation per day. 
So that's only, let's say, six, seven hours a week. Um, and then with, with, you know, the emailing back and forth and setting it up, you probably spend like 10 hours a week. Um, yeah, and the other 50, 55 hours or something is, is YouTube content, research, uh, recording. I mean, I still suck at recording, so it takes way longer than you guys see, especially with some of the things with the unpronounceable uh, medical terms, right? So you have to say it like a million times before it gets good. That's why there's so many jump cuts. <laughs> yeah, because I mispronounce sometimes, and then I'm like, fuck. And you have to re-say a whole sentence, and after a while I give up, and I just I just cut out the, the terrible part. Um. So yeah, I spent a lot of time on on the YouTube channel. Yeah, which I can't wait to dial back. But right now, I don't have an excuse to dial it back because I I spent adequate time with my cats and adequate time with my wife. Of course, when I have kids, then I'm uh, not going to be the asshole dad that my dad was always working. So I will be spending a lot less time. But by that time, all the all the best dose videos will have been done, and then you guys should be good to go for a while. Because I don't even know what to do after that. You know, I kind of discussed everything already that I wanted to discuss. And I, I redo some of the older content. I asked you guys a while ago, like, which videos do you want me to redo? Uh, no reply. <laughs> nobody nobody went through my catalog and said, I really want you to redo this video. So I'll just do the best of those videos and maybe throw in uh, a little bit things from my to-do list here and there. And then at one point, I'll run out of content and then... I know, Vickers Q&As, I guess, and podcasts, but I, I I don't know, my reaction content, I know it's popular, but fuck, man. Fucking eat your soul. So, guys, on fat dissolving injections like Aqualix. Aqualix, I don't know. Yeah, I forgot a couple things with the stubborn fat area. People talked in the comment section about some things that I never heard about, so that's why I didn't include it. But, uh, yeah. She is gorgeous. My wife or the cats? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife is hot, man. That cat has no hair. Dude, nobody in my house has hair, but even my wife has short hair. You know why I like my wife? You guys are gonna, gonna laugh. Uh, what is it? Plus, when you when you see, you can't unsee it. I'll show you something. Come on, zoom in. For the guys who watch Star Trek. It's my wife. It looks exactly like the Paul, albeit that she does smile, and she is more funny than the Paul. <laughs> Let me see if I can find a picture of my wife. Yeah, the Paul. Man, it doesn't focus right. Albeit blonde. Anyway, short hair is where it's at. So nobody in the household has hair. My cats don't have hair. My wife barely has hair. And I'm, I don't know, I fucking hate hair. Yeah. My thoughts on Botox. Um, there's your answer. I mean, if, 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 if it bothers you, then take it. I think my wife took Botox for a while. Uh, and then she stopped taking it. Because she, every time I made her laugh, it's like, Nothing happened. So I told her to stop doing it because <laughs> she doesn't have bad wrinkles. And I've come to a point where I just don't give a fuck. I don't know what it is, but no, man. It's small, big, doesn't really matter. Wrinkles, no wrinkles, hair, no hair. It doesn't fucking matter to me anymore, man. It's, it's so trivial. It's so fucking trivial. And luckily here in Thailand, people are not so focused. Like if I were to live in Las Vegas or both, or uh, not both, uh, Las Vegas or Dubai, where people are mad superficial, right? I might care more. I might get veneers, you know, I might grow my hair out. But here in Thailand, everybody, everything is so laid back. And, and you know, the funny thing about YouTube comment section, like 
people comment about shit all the time, right? They try to stab you or bring you down or whatever to make little snide remarks. And it, it's so far... I, it's so far in between me and those people that make it. And I, I know where it's stemming from, right? It's stemming from insecurity or people think that you're on the same level as their friends. So you make these snide remarks that you would make to your friends because that's friendly. But I don't see those people. I'll never meet those people. So it doesn't fucking phase me anymore. I'm not. I'm at a point where I'm very content with where I am. And if I have a fuckload of wrinkles and a pimple here or there or, you know, grooves in my head here because I sleep like that, so... It, you know, you see this, right? So you sleep like that on one side and then you get these grooves or the other side. I'm so married. I'm off the market. It doesn't fucking matter. But if you want to get Botox, yeah, go for it, man. <laughs> Chase knows. Yeah, get that working while you can. Chase has uh, no, no more time. That's why... <laughs> He was off cycle. All he did was live streams and then he got his wife pregnant and he, he did some content and now he's got a baby and Chase is gone again. <laughs> yeah. I'm so happy for you, dude. I'm fucking happy for you, dude. I can't fucking wait. Yeah. And then Chase, well, you're, you you put a third generation bodybuilder on the planet because we, we both know what's going to happen. We'll put a second generation, but since Chase's parents were also into lifting, there will probably be a third generation bodybuilder. Or at least, a, you know, into fitness because he got a daughter. Just no, just instill it, man. No OnlyFans and no fucking uh, bikini class. Don't contribute to the sex fest. Treat that body like a fucking prize. Mm. Hi, Jane. Are you, uh, are you spamming now? Be careful. Be careful. Let's see. Man, I'm getting tired. What is this? Tony Yutz is the opposite of the coach. Tony, Tony is fine, man. I just wouldn't take his advice. <laughs> I want to take his advice. Tony is funny, dude. He's silly. You know, out of all these guys, right, that are online, I think Tony takes care of his team better um, than than most other people. Right? Well, when we went to Dubai and uh kuwait he wanted to pay for everything he he really made sure that me and and uh what was this, this guy's name the other guy fuck I had a good time and it, uh, usually it comes at his detriment people take advantage of tony which is unfortunate you know um not naming any names but a lot of people took advantage of tony which uh you know um, uh, eventually bit him in the ass but when you compare Tony's behavior towards his team, people that he works with, of course, he expects people to work. But the people that he works with, uh, he takes care of very, very well, better than some other high name individuals who have a team with people that work for them as well. Simply based on what I hear, right? You hear everything through the grapevine. People work with this guy, work with that guy, or they're, you know, working for the company or something. And, and most guys don't really complain about Tony regarding the working relationship, but I hear a lot of complaints about other people. So yeah, that's the honest fucking truth, man. So even though Tony is a bit nuts, he's, uh, he's not, a, I don't think he's a bad guy. And he's only a bad guy because so many people take advantage of his uh, kindness. That's, that's his only fault. Then the information is a bit shit. I mean, Tony, the same information that you provide is shit. You know it. But you should put up a little bit bigger wall. Or uh, no sex fest, only Sarah, yeah, Sarah Stim fest. Who's ready for the Sarah Stim party? <laughs> Sarah Stim and chill. <laughs> if you take 18 IUs, all you could do is chill, man. <laughs> GH15 is love. No, GH, GH is love. GH is life. Yeah, GH is great.
you know you failed as a dad when your daughter is an only fans i don't know i've been living in thailand for such a long time it doesn't surprise me man you know how many women here are in in some sort of uh sex industry it's insane dude it's insane the women at muscle factory bangkok and patia the amount that have only fans or to do prostitution or or freelance work you have no idea there's so much of that I, I i don't even see it anymore you know unless these girls start twerking in front of me and then i'm like oh, fuck off it's how you know when you're off cycle right somebody starts twerking in front of you and you're like oh get out of here i want pizza <laughs> you show me pizza i get i get you know you get a rise out of me but you start doing shit no man get out of here yeah lawrence frisburn had a daughter who did porn <sighs> it hurts man that would fucking hurt so all the more um all the more uh incentive to be a good parent because again there's too much shitheads on the planet already so you got to spend the time, man, and put something of quality on the planet. How disgusting. Who are they? They have Instagram. <laughs> uh, if I share their Instagram, then it's my fault, right? So uh, come to Thailand. I'll point you to the right direction. But what you can do is you go to Muscle Factory Patia or Muscle Factory Bangkok Instagram page, and then you look for the tags. Right? You go to the tags, you'll find them easily, right? I didn't point them out to you, but they'll they'll tag the location. So you either go to Muscle Factory Patty or Bangkok location or to their Instagram page and you look at the tags and then you can easily find those girls that are twerking in the gym. Yeah. Is that true? Let me let me do a quick recon for you. Quick recon. Man, this this figures Q and A got completely derailed. It's at least better than Talking about PEDs all day. Muscle factory. Not like I talk about PEDs on the Vigorous q and It's also on, you know, all kinds of other things, consultations and that kind of stuff. Sometimes you just like, ugh. All right, let's go to the location of Muscle Factory Patty. A recent, oh, this is Bangkok. Oh, you tell me. <laughs> you tell me what you see. Doesn't focus, right? Yeah. All right. And what Patty, I think Patty is worse. Muscle Factory Patty. Uh, oh, this is uh, just a regular. Oh, this is not so bad. Let me check the location. Uh, places. Oh, come on. There's a lo there's location for that. Places. There we go. Recent. Loading. Fucking hell, dude. I mean, what is this shit? <laughs> See that? In the gym, dude. Fucking asshole in front of the camera. You know what? Fuck it. Here, what is this? What kind of angle is this? What What the fuck is this? That's the shit you got to deal with when you live in Thailand, you know? Before, we had to go to the go-go bar to see that. You would have to look it up, and now it's in the gym all day. Well, that's the life I chose, right? <laughs> all right, Octavian. There you go. Nice work. <laughs> this life is a lot more fun than the regular. Yeah, man, It's you, ca you catch me at the right time. No different than EOS in Vegas. <laughs> where did I go? And where was this Flex Lewis after party? This year I might come without my wife. So 
I might have to go to Sapphire. Yeah, if my wife is so pregnant, then she will not come to Vegas. So uh, it will just be me and Chase running around. Yeah, definitely not going to EOS and Sapphire. <laughs> Spending all those super chats. Uh, and we'll be doing super chats of her own. And then I'll, by that time, I'll be on cycle. So at least I'll have, you know, I'll feel a little bit less bad about the girls twerking in front of me. Let's see. Mm -mm. Do you plan to live forever in Thailand? Um, well, eventually I'll die, but yeah, I like it here, man. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's still the best place to live. I thought about moving to Dubai for a while. I, I thought about seriously moving to Las Vegas, but you know, it's it's just at this point with so many cats and having a house here and and i like my little network here man thailand is a great place you know it's it's all things considering for me it's the best place to live and it's very convenient and again i don't people are so laid back here that they don't really care much about your appearance so if you're small for a while fine it's fine you know people are not going to hold it against you but i felt that dubai and las vegas is a little bit more shallow in that sense where you need to look a certain way and then you feel pressure to look a certain way so you'll take more drugs to um look that way and maybe do the veneers and stuff and and i don't think my teeth are that bad could always be wider but i think you know i see so many american or people move to america and then they feel pressure to wear the fancy clothes and that kind of stuff and it's just not my style man so here you can kind of kick back and uh enjoy life in your own terms and in Dubai, there's a lot of governmental oversight, and especially in America. Oh, man. Don't get me started, man. So, no. Here, uh, there are rules, but they're poorly enforced. So you can, you know, as long as you don't hurt anybody, then you can just basically do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. And that feels very liberating. Yeah, I don't know how you make it back home safe, coach. What do you mean? From America? <laughs> yeah, what's the club that everybody goes to in Vegas? I saw Shaq DJing the year I went. Uh, I think it was Exus. Exus Club Vegas, yeah. Yeah, that's the one I went. In the win. Yeah, I'll link it down below. That's where uh, Shaq was uh, playing. That was a great place, man. That was a great place. I could really drink there. <laughs> and then I was not, I, this was so funny. Right? So we had, I had to Flex Lewis, or I was invited to Flex Lewis's after party because we have a mutual friend. So I go there, mutual friend leaves. I stay around, we, I have a blast talking with, um, what is his name? Um, forgot his name spent a whole night talking um uh, jose raymond and 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 the guy that they used to have a podcast with so we're, we're having a lot of fun yeah, uh, jose raymond calls me out for uh, sharing the liver king's emails but we still had a good laugh about it um and I, I got fucking wasted and everybody was wasted and then i walk out of excess take a taxi and then i saw people who were really wasted it looked like a fucking zombie apocalypse people puking in the fucking in the fucking trash bin and puking in the the flower pots or the plant pots <laughs> and i walked I, I usually when i'm intoxicated i can still you know get home and walk straight um must be some of my ukrainian genetics or something so anyway i was pretty pre plastered but not plastered enough to the point that i couldn't walk unlike all of those other people and then i walked past security and asked him is this normal for vegas it was a Saturday night, right? After the Mr. Olympia. Is this normal for Vegas that everybody's so shit faced? And he's like, Yeah, this is a pretty mild night. <laughs> I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> so what about all this puke everywhere? So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll well, there's a cleanup crew coming at, you know, seven in the morning. <laughs> so yeah, that was wild, dude. And then the the, the I got a grab where right? you have to wait or bolt or whatever I got. 
And then uh, I opened the door and, and I told the lady, I said, I'm drunk, but I'm not so drunk that I'm going to puke in your cab. And she's like, oh, thank you so much for telling me. Because I always have like fucking anxiety picking people up here. <laughs> I fucking knew. And then we had a great conversation about the lady boys in Thailand. Yeah, on the way back to, uh, where was I staying? I was staying at the Lynx or the Link. Yeah, I got a big fat room there. So yeah, Exus Club was a lot of fun. We should go there next year or this year. Uh, what did you like about Las Vegas uh, considering moving there? Well, it has everything you would want, right? It has uh, a lot of entertainment. It has uh, big cinemas. It has a lot of shopping malls. It has the casinos with a lot of good restaurants. It has uh, all the Americans that are happy and in a good mood. That's what I really what I noticed about Las Vegas. All the people there are on holiday and they have a great fucking time. They have a great fucking time. I've been to Detroit. I've been to Chicago. Um, in Chicago, I had a great experience because Chase uh, brought me around, right? So I didn't see much of Chicago, but all the stuff that I saw of Chicago was great because Chase was driving me around. Uh, we went to that great restaurant that I always forget, uh, always forget the name of. Um, I went to Detroit, right, with uh, Scott McNally. I had a good time there also. But then Sacramento, I felt a little bit weird uh, when I was doing the, the Mark Bell podcast in that area we were staying, but I was only there for a day. And I went to Columbus. Columbus was nice, but also felt a little bit weird in some places. Um, and then, of course, Disneyland in Florida. Florida was a bit weird. A lot of weird people there. Disneyland, even more weird people. Universal Studios was not too bad. But I felt that in Las Vegas, people were generally having a good time and happy. And that's what I like to be surrounded with. People who are uh, genuinely are having a good time. So I feel that I'm having a good time. Right? People around you are happy. This is what attracted me to Thailand. Everybody is just in a good mood. I mean, Jared Feather just arrived today. And you just see him light up. You know, it's like he just comes from Vegas. And he's like, I, I really like it here. I'm only here for two weeks, but I, I fucking love it. So he's slowly making the move. Um, yeah, and of course, if you live there for 33 years, of course you get bored with it. Of course, but when, when it's new and exciting, like I've been in Thailand for 20 years. Sometimes I'm almost also like, eh. you know, and then you take a trip to Patty or you, you go outside abroad and then and then you come back and then you appreciate Bangkok and Thailand again. So let Vegas, I could live there for maybe three months. And then of course you're tax obligated. So fuck that. <laughs> How long until you're tax obligated in the U.S.? Tax obligation, U.S. Uh, I think it's after three months or something. Oh, non-resident, non-resident. Oh, I can't find it on Google real quick. I think it's after 90 days you have to start paying taxes there. So you would only live there for like, I don't know, 89 days. And I would spend all my time in Vegas, man. And then after that, you get bored. Great gyms. All the people in the gyms were super cool, but maybe that's because I get recognized, you know? So I, I went to, um, what is that gym? Elevation Fitness. And I wanted to charge me a day pass, which I'm fine with. I mean, I, I'm financially secure. I can pay a day pass, no fucking problem. And then a couple of guys that followed my YouTube channel are like, no, 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 no. Take my day pass, you know? Super cool, super friendly. Very nice. We talked a little bit, shit, shit, took some pictures, you know, uh, answered some questions. I had this kind of stuff, the hospitality. That's what I fucking love, you know. So, um, and then I then I went to uh, what's his name, um, uh, Brad, 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 Brad. The, jeez, uh, I forgot. I'm terrible with names. It's late. It's two thirty. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> What is this guy's name in Los Angeles? Los Angeles. Bradley Martin. Yeah. So I went to Bradley Martin's gym. That was a $60 day pass. And my wife had a fucking heart attack. It's like, you're really paying $60 to train here? It's like, well, we're here now. 120 bucks, dude, for two people. Holy shit. And people in there were super nice also, right? Now, now, now my guys there and Brad and I, we had a little discussion, but Brad didn't know who I was, so it's fine. Um, but still, once I was inside, you know, people were cool and friendly. Um, so I, I got a warm welcome in most bodybuilding related places. And it's, it's the same was in Dubai, even though it wasn't, you know, known at that time. And in, in uh, Oxygen Gym, I was known because people knew me from the bodybuilding competition circuit. Um, 
so yeah i like to go to places where the community is just strong you know the bodybuilding community and the only place that i really felt that is in bangkok dubai and las vegas yeah so those would be the places for me to live all right where are we yeah that's excess yeah excess club we'll go Emo, I'm asking in my live stream tomorrow. Yeah, ask Chase. Super chat him too. Super chat him. Fucking. Uh, how come nobody says in Russia is a good move? Well, you know why. They have rules, but they are poorly enforced. Why do you think so many Russians move to Thailand? Octavian, you're not in Russia, right? You're in Romania. So it's cheap and you can buy almost everything. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but it's cold. I mean, there's so many Russians that moved from Russia to Thailand, man. All doing like illegal shit. <laughs> or OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do a couple more questions and I'm going to throw in the towel because I'm turning, uh, getting sleepy. What was your career back in the days in Holland? I was a financial business consultant, but it's a little bit of... You know, a little bit ambiguous because we would use financial computer systems, um, which we would optimize mo mostly Oracle, Oracle, we would use to call it. And then uh, we would, you know, transition people from a release 10, 11 to 12. That was the, the latest one. Or we move them over from SAP to uh, Oracle, release 12. And that was mostly from the financial, uh, how, do you, how do you say this? Uh, modules, the financial modules. So I had a lot of um, knowledge about financial computer systems, but to give them real, real financial invest in, investing advice, no, that was not it. So we called it a financial business consultant. Of course, I understand a lot about finances. That's why I'm financially secure. Um, but it was mostly in the context of IT and computer systems and optimizing um, or translating entire departments of humans into a computer system. This is the IT boom, right? So... Uh, a lot of people got replaced by computer systems, and that's what I did. So you would talk with, imagine some snotty 24-year-old comes into your into your company all dressed up, and then starts talking to everybody, and then goes back to his office, writes uh, a computer program of um, the, what people would do, and then you would get a six-month severage, a severage package. It's bad karma, man. That's why I'm happy I didn't do I I only did that for five, six years. Yeah. Yeah, that's bad fucking karma. So I'm giving back as much as I can to atone for my uh many a um uh letting go during the IT boom. But that was my job. Yeah, replacing people with computer systems from the financial segment of the business. Yeah. Thailand, Turkey, Greece, and Dubai are second Russian homes. Yeah, because it's they're all chill places, you know. So just and Russia is pretty strict, man. Russia is pretty strict, from what I've heard. Uh, all the Russians say that they move here, so I don't blame them. But Europe is pretty strict, also. So you know, if you have the financial means and the incentive to live somewhere else where you get to do what you want, why not? Why not? Will there be a PD experiment when the baby is born or just regular cycle? I, I'll just go on TRT, man. I, I mean, I'm at 95 kilos now because I st started increasing my food intake. I'm 95 kilos now, so that's what, 100, 200? Let me see. And it's without the Incrolex. KG, two pounds. 95 kilos. Yeah, so 210 pounds. And dude, if I go on TRT, I'll be 100 kilos. Easy. 220 pounds. And if I add in a little bit of anivore, I'll be 105 pounds, 230 pounds. I mean, what more than that do you want? You know, I, I'm sure Chase is laughing his ass off. He's like, fuck you, I'm going to be 270. But I think I think that like super big, I'd rather be stay lean and, and somehow maintain this face because I do like this face a lot better than the, you know, man, when I watch those old videos of mine, I'm like, oh, yeah. Maybe like in the morning, I'm a little bit leaner. Now it's the end of the day and I went to Cheesecake Factory. So a little bit, you know, not as streamlined as normal. Um, but I like the way I look now, you know? So if I can gain 10 kilos, 
on TRT, maybe 10 milligrams of Anivar per day, then I'm done. And and I, I found a home for Incrolex. Uh, it's not me. <laughs> I find I find a home for it. Uh, not all of the Incrolex, but I found home for a couple of vials of Incrolex. And um, yeah, so somebody's going to be very happy. And uh, and and I'll, I'll, I'm, I might do like a little bit of Incrolex with that. And then, dude, if it's already like this, man. I mean, okay, my legs are shit, right? Don't don't ask me about the legs. Um, but if I if I can get no, it's not Aaron. No, 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 it's not Aaron. No, Aaron Aaron needs to get his own Incrolex, <laughs> so, which is difficult because I bought all the stock. Uh, where where was the question? Oh, here about the cycle, right? So um, where was I? So all I need is to gain a little bit of leg size and a little bit of chest. And I think a little bit of Incrolex, GH, test, 150 test. And of course, nobody's going to believe me. But at this point, I really don't give a shit. Um, he's on a full-blown cycle. So no, I, I used to be 260, okay? I, I have a lot of muscle uh, memory. Let's put it that way. So a little bit of test, a little bit of Anivar. Uh, not even Primo because it's unaffordable right now. And I don't want to make, waste that money. I'm not going to spend $16 to $35 per ampule when I can literally feed a kid for two days for one single ampule of primo so don't be stupid right i'm financially secure but money still matters right you have to keep it into perspective so test anivar pharmaceutical um incrolex that i have gh that i have and th that's it and that's it i might ramp the test up to 250. Ooh, exciting so exciting maybe 500 at one point and that's it dude I, dude if i go on 500 tests i'll be 115 kilos I'll be 240, easy. So, yeah. But no more crazy experiments, man. After after reviewing all the literature about Trimbalone, I mean, I'm like, ugh. And, and, and really diving into the literature, you realize that most of these things are just not good for you. All right, last question. And then we're going to wrap it up. I aim to take 200 grams of protein daily. I just eat two meals. Better to split it up in more meals? Yes. Yes, is it okay to have 100 grams of protein per meal? Uh, I would say split it up, right? But if this works well for you, I mean, 100 grams of protein, how much, how much? That's like 500 grams of chicken at a time, you know? So I would split it up, man. I would split it up. I have multiple servings. Of course, now it's been kind of debunked that there's no upper limit of protein intake, uh, but it's only one study, and that's not based on um, this, on, on, you know, animal meat sources that's based on some sort of refined milk protein. So if you eat 200 grams of protein, how about you do four meals of 50 grams? And and uh, um, and if you want to do intermittent fasting and, and have a little bit of an uh, eight-hour eating window, you eat at 12, uh, 2.30, 5, 7.30, and 10. Is that correct? Yeah. 12, 2.30... Oh, that's five. That's that's five meals. Twelve, two thirty, five, seven thirty. Done. Right, and if you if you're hungry at night, then you skip uh, the, the first meal and you have the last meal at ten. So that's two thirty, five, seven thirty, at ten. That's what I would do. I have five meals per day, right? All right. Let's see if I missed anything. All right. Let's wrap it up here, guys. I'm uh, dead fucking tired. And tomorrow I got a I got a date with uh, Godzilla versus Kong. Don't spoil it. And I got to donate a little bit more semen. So yeah, just you and me, baby. <laughs> that will be the last one. And then uh, and then two weeks from now, mid April. Oh man, you guys are gonna see some scary shit. Yeah, yeah. All right. Peace out, guys. I'll see you next weekend. Enjoy yourself. See you later.